Brandon, you look so like fresh faced and just I know. weird. Mm. What the fuck? Baby faced. Dude. So what happened? Did you lose a bet or something or? No, no I, just... I know, I know why. I know why he shaved. He told me why he shaved. Oh, what's the reason? Mm-hmm. Is it is it personal uh, or? Uh, it was what? supposed to be a secret. It's supposed to be a secret. Okay. Is well, it actually, then... You want me to keep it a secret or what? Nah, you could say it. All right. So <laughs> when he's scrubbed in, uh, he only lets it get as long to where it doesn't bother him, and to where he has to wear a beard net, a beard. Oh, cover. I get what you're saying. Yeah, because if yeah, it's too it long, just... then you have to yeah, put on the yeah. weird thing. Yeah. Yeah. He does I not like that. that. Yeah, it's probably more annoying than it's. I don't know. Worse. I already look like a lunch lady with a bouffant. I don't need. Yeah, but uh, you're a lunch lady that's saving lives, man. So I think there's a difference. I think in a way, it's every same, lunch but... lady saves a life. <laughs> I, I, yeah, probably. Also, shout out. I can see it on my camera, but the headband tan, like from my fade. Yeah, so above is good. And then I, it's I all white from where the headband was. You see my fucking Bali clava tan, bro. Dead ass. Oh, you got a little bit of one. Yeah. Yeah, you can see my Bali clava tan. <laughs> yeah, and his forehead's sure, so bro. much whiter. <laughs> zoom in, bro. That was, And the thing is, that was the fucking first day. That was the first day. I go, holy shit, I'm wearing a hat. So that's when I started going lifeguard mode with the visor. <laughs> lifeguard mode. Dude, that was a look, bro. In the in the go, Diamonds uh, Pits, I saw that. That was, that was a good yeah, one. Yeah, I go, uh, you know, I wonder how I would look in a visor. Caden, give me that shit. Because I was wearing it. I, was, I forgot my bucket hat, so I took his. And then uh, he has a visor. I'm like, oh, trade Z's. Right, not even mine. And then uh, we got like a free one through like some homies at Gangster, and uh, lifeguard duty is a thing now. I might be a hatches on lifeguard duty person. That might be a reoccurring person. A reoccurring hatch character. Just the white nose. Yeah, the white nose. Oh my god, looks fire. I gotta get it, dude. Like, okay, if I'm dressing up as it, I'm gonna put like some like white paint where it like never comes off. Well, don't do that whole day because that's gonna burn the fuck out of you. I'm talking like obviously like fake like makeup paint. No, I know, but if if you do that, it's gonna burn the fuck out of you. Like, Think so? I've I've heard of people like there's been a story about this that I heard. I don't remember where, but a hundred percent, I like someone put white paint in this dude's uh like sunscreen as like a joke to like make it so it never rubbed in. That dude got so badly burnt because the oils in the paint made the it almost made it like a magnifying glass for the UV. That sounds <laughs> like fucked. a thousand ways to die type of shit. Probably a little bit. So maybe not paint, but you got to get like the zinc, dude. Like the hardcore, mm. like brute, but on steroids. Like ooh. maybe I should just put maybe I should just put brute on my nose. I mean that that's a good look too. Layer layer on brute. <laughs> hmm. What were you gonna say, Brandon? You had an uh, O oh moment, and then I had you know I have some zinc for him, but it's all right. <laughs> all right, well, we can use that. That works. Facts. Mm-hmm. But yeah, so guys. Up, guys, so, uh, hey, it's a podcast, um, episode 33, uh, we were at an event, Sunshine, Sunshine State Open, I can't say that tournament name without slurring it, I don't know why they made it that, but I just can't get it out fully. Feels good, dude, my Bali Clavitan, you know, does not feel fucking good. But, yeah, uh, no, that, that doesn't look know. good. I like it, so none of you guys have problems with saying sun, Sunshine State Open? You could say it five Sunshine times fat? Sunshine State Major. That's major. I was just gonna freaking say that because they just changed that. They said that in the in a video that they just posted. Sunshine State Major. And Aren't they, they put opens? Hella, they put hella emphasis on the major. I don't know. Maybe that shows how old I am because I remember every event used to be called the something open, like Mao mm. Mid Atlantic. Literally open. last year. Last year? Okay, so maybe I'm not fucked. All right. Maybe they no, just changed good. it and I didn't get the memo. But uh, but yeah, guys, so we're back from that event. Um, all of us had some pretty insane travel getting in last night. Um, just real cap, like my story, uh, we take off. Well, we were supposed to take off around like 8.15-ish a.m. over in Florida. Uh, most of you guys know, if you were at the event, that there was a pretty big storm that went through Florida during that time. Um, and so a lot of a lot of planes were delayed or kind of shut down and had to wait to get out. And uh, that means, you know, I, I miss my connection. So I got to sit in Denver for a little bit and then go to Phoenix and then go to Sacramento. So that was fun. I had an extra plane ride. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, I know Hatch got home ridiculously late last night. God, dude. I got home, so, dude, Brando, we leave we leave the house at like 4.45 in the morning, right? Yeah. Go return the U-Hauls, right? <laughs> U-Hauls. And, uh, yes, they did that again. <laughs> of course. Of course. It's always the move. Uh, and uh, sh- we're cutting time close. We're, I'm talking close, right? Um, 
because obviously people are messing around. Logan, pro, pro God, travel. Damn, tip? I could not get that kid up. Pro travel tip: uh, get clear. Straight up, bro. That saves me I, hours, dude. I literally, I got, I got it. And, you got it, uh, nice. Yeah, I did get it. It's a little uh, mixed. It's pricey, money. It's about two hundred bucks a year. You know what? But yeah, with the amount that we pricey. fly, and the fact that SMF and most of the airports we go to have it, it, dude, <laughs> saves me so much like anxiety yeah. and events. Uh, so we go return, we go return the U-Hauls and, uh, I'm sitting at the airport. Brando, Brando is leaving for his flight. He's like, oh shit, we're going to be a little bit late. And he gets, and he's like running. I'm like, okay, sweet. So I'm sitting there with all of this gear, right? Mine, <laughs> Sears, <Gear> bitch. <laughs> his basically, right. I'm sitting there with AJ. So, um, what my new, the newer teammate, uh, we're sitting there dude. I'm, I have like a perfect view of like all this, like thunder and lightning going off. I'm like, fuck. Right. And, uh. Cedar gets back when we have to like low key. Thank, dude, thank God we had clear, bro. Not even gonna lie. Uh, <laughs> we had to like run, run to our airport, run to our gate, right? And we are sitting on the tarmat for like, like two and a half hours. And Jesus. it's like I'm tired, dude. Because I, I, Brando, me and Brando stayed up the entire night before. I've done we that a lot. Yeah, dude, we didn't. We we finished cleaning the Airbnb, got everything settled. It was like one thirty. Um. Oh shit. I forgot I went to Old Town, but that's another. That's another, that's, another. <laughs> that's a different uh, story. <laughs> well, definitely a different story. But uh, so we're sitting on the tarmac for like two and a half hours. I'm not even noticing, right? And then I I I hear some talking going on, and like people are like, "Oh, right," you know, the typical bullshit, right? So I take my headphone off, right, and I'm I'm listening, and they're like, "All right, everybody, we are in tenth place uh, for takeoff." And I go, "What the fuck? We're not off the ground yet, bro." <laughs> I was in sh- I was in shock. Oh, like, I was low-key pissed, bro, because I already low-key had to take a shit already. Oh, God. Um, so, uh, yeah, I'm glad. Do, so, like, I, I actually do have a bathroom story, though. Oh, no, God damn it. No, not yet. <laughs> it's too too soon into the show. Um, this, is on, this is Mile High Club. Oh, fuck. That's fire. But, uh, dude, my, my experience was similar, except I got lucky in the fact that I just passed out. <laughs> I got to my Southwest first class first class seat, you know, the one that has the extra reg, uh, leg room in the exit row, and I I literally passed out and woke up in Denver. And from then I was trying to figure out like why are all my flights delayed? What the fuck happened? Yeah, I I had no idea the storm rolled through. I don't know. I uh I same thing. Uh got on the plane as soon as we got up in the air. Uh, I fell asleep. Didn't wake up till uh well, like 20 minutes before we landed. And we got off the plane, uh, ran to our, our connecting flight, almost missed that. We got on, and Michelle told me that uh, our first plane was rerouted. Um, like, I, I like I don't know. We had to go around the storm mm-hmm. or, or whatever. We still landed in... in um, but it wasn't like the Aust- normal flight route that you would take to get there. <clears throat> exactly. Yeah, it was longer. Mm-hmm. Um, but, yeah, yeah. I didn't even know. Didn't even notice. Mm-hmm. Even honest, yeah, that's the best part about after an event is when you're just so fucking tired that like you could sleep anywhere. It doesn't matter, dude. I didn't do. And the thing is, for me, since I didn't get sleep, we land, we land. It's like an hour and a half back to Cedars, and then, dude, I have like a four and a half hour drive home. I look at the map. I look at like the GPS. Dude, shit's redder than the fucking red light district, bro. Crazy, <laughs> right? And uh, it is adding like two and a half hours onto my drive Jesus. right and so i was sitting in like dead still traffic for so long like no joke i could have actually like taken like a decent nap it was like so just, just no movement just nothing no movement nothing and i probably i probably could have taken like a good at one point probably like a 30 minute nap i put my car in park and was like and just, chilling on my phone. just chill <laughs> right That's and fucked. um oh man yeah i didn't get home i didn't get end up getting home until like uh like nine 20 ish and that was Fuck. like yeah dude that was unfortunate and i had like no sleep and i'm just like oh walk in jump in the shower put some pjs on and slept like a baby you know what i'm saying it felt so nice <laughs> dude i did the same exact thing like it's funny i think because of the delays i ended up getting home pretty much the same time as you but without the seven hour drive i was seven hours in a airplane terminal but oh well <laughs> it all worked out you know at least in the airplane terminal there's a bar there's a bar. Yeah, that's true. I also just, you know, paid for a week at an event and, uh, you know, have not gotten paid yet. So uh, was not trying to blow through all that. Dude, I was th- I was thinking about the same shit. I was like, damn, dude, uh, 
I saw it, dude. There was a tempting bag of Starburst, and I was like, dude, uh, four and a half dollars for a fucking roll of Starburst? You got me fucked up. So dude, airport. I was like, airport prices yeah. are, are fucking ridiculous, like, man. I, gotta prepare. I forgot I got to prepare, prepare myself mentally for how much money you spend at an event. Dude. Right? There's no sugarcoating it in paintball, right? Dude, the amount of money you will spend at an event is like astronomical, right? Mm -hmm. It's a naturally expensive sport, right? Yeah, well, and then, uh, and then all the just natural travel shit, like... I don't know, flights, Ubers, uh, eat food. I don't know. Absolutely. There's all that shit too. Absolutely. So it's like the reason why we use the U-Hauls is literally to cut back on that. Like, dude, like almost in half, so much. more than half, right? Is it? And, uh, <laughs> I'm trying to think, would it be less expensive for me just to rent a U-Haul for the next event or to try to rent a car? U-Haul for sure. Oh, just get the U-Haul. Okay. Okay. truck, you you're good. Yep. Yeah. Single all cab right. truck, dude, that is like significantly <clears throat> more like less significantly, expensive yeah significantly less expensive um i wonder i think we started doing the u-hauls like the beginning of like 2021 and we started with a rental and then we were like you know what let's test it out let's just do the single truck single cab truck right and uh we're like damn this actually because like we were doing the math because you know how they do like per mile mm -hmm. right we were like trying to do the math on how like and we were like being extra frugal. We're like, all right, the U-Haul's not going anywhere. If we're going, we're taking the rental, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, we ended up actually paying more in gas for the rental than we did for the U-Haul. Damn, for like the whole thing mm -hmm. altogether. Yeah, and it was like, god damn. So, U-Haul, pro tip, to go, pro travel tra travel tip, especially it, it's paintball less, travel tip. <laughs> it's less money. Uh, you fit more, and it's just fun. And let's be it's real, with every paintball team, you know, even if you get one rental car, where the fuck are you going to throw all your gear bags and shit? You Dude. know? Okay. You ready for this segue? <laughs> you know, and when you fuck. sit in the back, bro, when you sit in the back, low key like a roller coaster in a way. You know what I'm saying? It kind of is like a roller coaster hatch. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Some you know, people would say it. life is a highway, out. but I think yours yeah. is now a roller coaster. So what's going <laughs> on with that, Holy brother? Fuck, bro. <laughs> oh my God, dude. The roller coaster, dude. Woo! So if dude, anyone saw my say, story bro. from today, and this is Tuesday when we're recording this when we got back from the event, Hatch had a breakdown last night, but it wasn't <laughs> nah, in the bro. way you think. <laughs> it was bad, bro. It was actually so... Like, dude, that video is one-tenth. Oh, it like, doesn't do it justice. It, it, it Holy fuck, man. It oh, my God. It doesn't do it so, justice. Dude, <laughs> do, I, do I dare try to go run and grab the pictures real quick? Do I go, yes. You know, yes, I think you do. Hold up. All right, hold I, up. I love how, crazy, boys. I got you. In that story, <laughs> what made me laugh is Mount Micah was coming over, like, trying to talk him down. And I feel like, did all of you guys have to do that? Yes, yes. And <laughs> and that, that and we were waiting to get onto the right. This start. <laughs> hold up. Because you guys, at that point, you were at the, like, you were at the station. You were getting on the ride, and he was still breaking down. But how was the yeah, line? Th there was no line. Oh, I think there okay, was one okay. group in front of us. But this started, like, there were some stairs we had to go up. It, this started before we even entered into the, <laughs> into the, uh, we, it started as we were walking up to it. Did Mind you, you, we bought tickets for it. And like we walked up, and he's like, "Oh fuck, dude!" And he, he starts going. <laughs> and I thought he was just kidding around at first. Fuck me, dude! It, it sucks just, that I'm at such a dark angle. But it's just progressively. Bro. Also, Come sorry on, to all Blair. the podcast listeners. I wasn't. Able sorry to all the sorry to all the non podcast watchers. Uh, no, I was saying something else, but you just cut in. Uh, yeah, I, ha I can barely see this, but it looks like Hatch is dude. fearing for his life. I was fucking actually fearing for my life. That and was, meanwhile, uh, Logan next to him is looking like he's having the best shows, time ever. Yeah. Yeah. Show us that picture again. Can you put it up bro, again? Logan was having... Look at, look at Micah, bro. Look at Micah. God, he's so much clearer. Oh, my God. Micah, too. <laughs> Micah, then AJ. AJ, yeah. Cedar, yeah Yvonne. Yvonne. Cedar's, going Cedar. Cedar's crazy, having bro. a great time. Dude, and you're literally holding dying, on to Logan. Bro. I am <laughs> dying. Me and Logan are interlocked arms, bro. Oh, my God. And uh, so... You literally yeah, said Loki Bear, come here. I did not I did not think that it was gonna be uh, I did not think that was gonna happen, bro. Dead ass. Well, I like, you uh, weren't prepared for that? No, because dude cause like I like rides, right? Like Space Mountain, Thunder Mountain. That mm -hmm. shit's easy, bro. That's nothing. That's probably right? worse than that roller coaster. No fucking way, bro. You what? are what coaster was right it? now, bro. Dude, something, bro. I don't know, dude. So the thing is also right. <laughs> I love roller coasters, so I'm the opposite of you up. on this one. Yeah. We're walking up. 
people are fucking screaming, going lightning fast. I'm like, okay, like any roll. roller coaster ever. Right. Yep. Like any roller coaster ever. <laughs> like, and then, um, I'm like, God damn, dude, that shit's a little fast. That's a little God, high, bro. I love how, sorry, I had to cut in again. Brandon is just dying this whole time in eight bit. And it's amazing. Like I could see dude. half the frames. <laughs> When I tell you how bad this was, bro, dude, my team saw me in the most vulnerable state of my entire life, bro. That one was fucking crazy, bro. Uh, so we're like getting there, getting there, dude. And I start, I start like sweating fucking bullets, bro. Like right when we get to like the base of it, like the bottom, bro, I am sweating bullets, bro. And I'm like, Logan, bro, I don't like roller coasters, dude. Like I really don't like roller coasters, dude. And, uh, Dude, he's like, you don't like, he goes, he goes, no, Hatchberry, like roller coasters, right? And I'm like, no, sir, bro. I am. Yo, what's up with the five in one voice? Has this been like, was that a thing all, all event? You guys were talking like this? Yes, absolutely, yeah. dude. Okay, oh, we'll get yeah. to that we later. Will, Back to the roller coaster. What are we What are we um, <laughs> um, So yeah, the roller coaster. Dude, every step is like a fucking cliff. <laughs> bro going up there every step um, is a journey <laughs> yeah dude and so aj is like my entire thing is bro shout out to my team bro my team had my fucking back bro they saw how distressed i was honestly loki fuck micah because he was like, fuck he, was, micah. he was like hey dude hatch you want to end up on your favorite reddit page i'm like fuck dude, <laughs> what the hell? right he literally says it in the video right and uh <laughs> so we're getting there Get to the top, ah, dude. I am like, like, dude. My face, like here, it, I can't even fucking feel it. Dude. I can't even feel it. Like, I am like breaking down. I can down. feel my face when I'm with you. Yeah, and uh, dude, AJ, AJ is like, Hatch. I remember when you told me, you know, that time comes when you say, "Bro, I need you. I need you." Yo, like, why does AJ sound slow in your depiction of him? Dude, because he does sound slow when he talks sometimes. What? Like, he's a talker, bro. He's a talker. He I know, but talk. I've never heard AJ talk like this. Trust me, bro. Trust I'm me. trying not dude. to flame a man who doesn't need to be flamed right now. We're here to flame oh, you, Hatch, all right? AJ, AJ's a talker, bro. AJ could talk, oh, he me is a talker. Fucking, talk me into the fucking North Tower on the fucking September 2001, bro. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, talker, oh, talker. my God. Right? And um, so our show's like, on a watch list now. That's fun. He's like, he's like, I need you, Hatch. I need you. And I'm like, Phew. he's like, he's like, I've I've seen you run down the field, shoot fools in the fucking face, like like a madman with no fear in your eyes, right? He's like, I need you. And I'm like, oh fuck, dude. Everybody's like hyping me up, dude. My team is hyping me up. <laughs> like, like everybody's like, everybody's like jumping, like you got this, Hatch. You got this, dude. Rando is giving, dude. I am in Brando's arms, bro. He's like, he's like, he's like, I love you, bro. He's like, dude, for content, bro. Imagine the for podcast. Content. And I'm like, I'm yeah, like, ah, fuck. And so <laughs> we, the, the second I get up to the top, I'm like, well, I'm in it. There's no way I can go down. Cause dude, if you, if, I don't care how, how it is, dude. If you go down the stairs on once you're already up, pussy on the record. Pussy. Right? Dude, so the thing is, right. That's like a legitimate phobia of mine. And I was conquering my fucking fears, dude. Fucking Fuck the cry. All I, started hash cr I started crying, bro. I started crying, no, bro. All, all you heard in your head this whole time was literally like imagining us on Discord being like, if you don't ride a roller coaster, you're a pussy. <laughs> like Straight just up, bro. imagining <laughs> that shit. Like, and I'm, I'm like hyping myself up, bro. I'm like, like jogging in place. Bro. I'm like, whoo, 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 whoo. Breathing, dude. And then all of a sudden we get to the top. Bro, shit, it went upside down. <laughs> that's not that fucked bad. up bro dude you got me <laughs> fucked up bro um that shit dude and the thing is it starts off hella fucking slow dude. we get we get okay okay jesus before Brandon. it even starts bro before even we get in there bro dude, so we're sitting there i everybody's like hatch you get the front i said hell oh, no no. Dog. no way i'm going on anyway dude stop begging that i want to i want to be in the middle in case we all die you know that way dude. it's all of us <laughs> Yes. Yes. Exactly. I knew it. Right? And uh, so we're like, we're like strapped in. Uh, they go, oh, does anybody have like phone or anything on there? I go, I have my phone. And then he goes, okay. And I already locked myself in. So he's like, all right, take that one off. I take it off. Then uh, give, it, uh, give, him my, give him my phone. He puts it away. Right. I t go back. Shit ain't locking. <laughs> bro shit is not yeah locking. this is where you fucked up if they say you have your phone just say no and like hold on to I, it exactly i now know right? so 
I'm like, I'm like, uh, can I get this a little tighter? Right. And so they get it. Like I get it as tight, bro, as tight. I can barely breathe <laughs> as it is, bro. Just from the crying. Right. And, uh, like I like, dude, I started, cr- I dude, you can see it in the video, bro. Dude, I was crying, bro. Dude, I had to get ahead of the memes already. Um, so this starts off, dude, insanely fucking slow. And it's just like, you're building up, building up, building up. Dude, and Cedar is like is, reaching behind You're just it, describing the experience of a roller coaster. <laughs> but it's from a different perspective. I know, bro. it's, it's amazing because like, uh, it's just funny to hear, man. The thing, I, okay, the thing is, it just shows that peer pressure is the ultimate fucking drug, bro. It Pretty really much. is. <laughs> It'll make you do God anything. damn, dude. dude. It's your, peer pressure from the boys will make you do anything. And bro, when I tell you that, and the thing is, right, we get off, we get off the roller coaster. Cedar goes, "Holy fuck, Hatch, that one was actually pretty rough." Dude, it was a one, rough one. It was, it was actually like one. it was like a was it a wooden coaster poorly, or was it like yes? A, oh, so it was, it was, it was a wood It was like yeah. okay, but the thing is, they deceived the deceivers, bro. They <laughs> painted the wood white so it looked like metal, bro. Dead ass. Right. Well, I mean, you can and tell just based off how much support structure there is, but that's a roller coaster person thing, and bad. you wouldn't know that. It wouldn't. It didn't look that bad, right? But then I would, as, as soon as I started getting like way closer, dude, I'm looking up at that shit, right? And uh, Cedar goes, "Dude, I think I lost an inch off my height off that one, bro." He's like, "He's like, dude, my back fucking hurts now." Because dude, there were some parts, dude. I was catching at least four or five G's, bro. I was, I was catching some age, you know. I felt like, I felt like Maverick. Not even gonna lie. Dude, but, that turn where we're sideways, <laughs> I <laughs> holy fuck. Oh my fucking god, dude. You're that like, whoever good. designed this did not do a good job. Jesus. Dude, I, that was that one was so rough, dude. I was actually like I was like pinned in my seat, bro, like like this, dude, again, like, like against Logan, dude. Like holding on his tight. Because the thing is, and it's also I sit in it. No motherfucking handrails, bro. What do you hold on to? There was nothing. And it's like the closest handrail was like one in front of me. That's my what... arms couldn't even reach it. I couldn't even reach it. Okay. Like legitimately. It's a problem I've never had it. on a roller coaster ride. Dude, Brando, back me up. Back me no, up. It, it, no, yeah, yeah. There, there was nothing like right, right in front of you, or the thing that was latching you down. Usually, sometimes you might have like something, some grip here, or, or like right on the lap bar. Yeah. No, it, it, it was you. You really had to lean forward to, uh, and grab to the the seat in front of you or the cart in front of you. Yeah, there, there was nothing to hold. It's pretty, sh- Except pretty Logan. shittily yeah. designed coaster. Yeah, and I was going to say, if anything happened to you, Logan was also coming. <laughs> like, yeah, dude. <laughs> Shout out to Logan. Bro. And or if your seat unclipped and his didn't, you would hold on by just bear hugging that kid. Dude, I go, I go Logan, bro. I'm, I'm not going to lie. I think I need you for this one. And uh, he's like, so Cedar goes, all right, so who's riding with Hatch? Bro, Logan goes. <laughs> like, it was his fucking duty, bro. Salute, right? He was he was ready for it. He's ready and, to help uh, his dad. Yeah, dude, that was that was the ultimate father son combo, bro. But now no one can fucking say that I don't. I didn't do shit. No, that's no true. Say I didn't do shit for content. I dude, I faced my fears. That's like, true. Fa- mid so mid now, round when you're clutching now in Valorant, we can't be like, hey, remember that time Hatch was too scared to ride a roller coaster? We can't say that, up, bro. We can't not do that. that one. So not even. Yeah. So let me just say I'm proud uh, of you, man. I really am. I think thanks, I think you man. you you definitely uh, fought some uh, some of your your I demons, fought some your fears, demons, bro. <laughs> yeah, dude, bro, my, that face, I dude. It there was, was emotions like coming. It was stuck like that, bro. Um, he was going through it. <laughs> yeah. God, no, well, oh, and it's wow. funny because the face is what makes me laugh because you could tell you were so distraught, but also trying to like still be happy like like i'm in a good mood you're like i am okay it's just i'm very scared i'm like hyping myself up i'm like my guy (laughs) he's shadow boxing i gotta like i gotta hide myself up dude and then a second later it just fucking hits again and he just yeah (gasps) (gasps) yep 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 (laughs) (laughs) a fucking flow of just fear and i'm like yeah how much adrenaline was going through you though Dude, I I couldn't feel my fucking face, and I was like, because you know, usually it's like when you lift it when you're weightlifting, right? It's like, dude, if you if you get to the point where you like start to not feel your face, you're getting numb, means you're not getting enough oxygen, right? And so I was like <laughs> making sure I was taking the deepest of breaths. I was like, <sighs> like I was taking, I was like, dude, water breathing like deep. I was gonna say you were you were like wind technique here, like you yeah. had. <laughs> 
I was all over white clouding out there, if you will. Right. Oh, okay. And, uh, <laughs> man, that was a fucking trip, bro. That was like my, my endorphins were running, bro. Like, Oh, you probably felt amazing after that. <laughs> like you didn't no, need I any drugs like the rest shit, of the bro, night. Like, dude. dude, it got to the point to where like, even after I was like, I would, I would, yeah, it was bad, bro. <laughs> People would ride past, and I'm like, like fucking PTSD, bro. It was so bad, right? And it would get to the point to where I would be like, just thinking about the roller coaster. My my feet would go numb again, and I'm like, oh fuck. Oh no. Even after, even after. Yeah. Oh, man. Well, yeah, man. So I, that was one of the big storylines from the weekend, uh, yeah. dude. As I woke up this morning because I, I I crashed out, got like a couple hours of sleep last night after I finished packing, and I woke up to that fucking story, and I was just laughing my ass off. <laughs> oh my god, Ash. <laughs> it felt, but it, the thing is though, it felt good because it's like, uh, how would I how would I explain it? It's. Uh, such a team building that's like a that's a legitimate team building exercise bro my teammates dude they knew it dude they saw it they <laughs> saw it in my or is it like eyes, trauma bro. bonding it, same same same. both it okay same, same same all right got you <laughs> but dude it was like my teammates had my back bro my teammates had my back legitimately if my seatbelt came off i think through the power of friendship i would have stayed in bro. <laughs> power of friendship <laughs> you would have just defied gravity i fuck with it like, no joke, everybody would have all grabbed onto me. Like, Brando and Michelle from behind, dude. Logan would have grabbed me. Cedar would have fucking stretched his fatherly arms backwards to grab me. And I wouldn't I wouldn't even have moved. Well, uh, okay. So, is that your biggest fear of the roller coasters? Is that the belt is going to come loose when you're on it? Dude, have you, have you not seen Final Destination, bro? <laughs> well, I hope you realize that is a fictional story that was written by people. And, yes, people have died from that. But the statistics of that happening to you... Uh, you're probably more likely to win the lottery. You know, uh, the fact that I have won the lottery, it, dude, there's a... I haven't won the lottery yet, bro. Okay, I bro, thought you said you have, have won the, the next, lottery. Bro. I was like, I wait, what? How did we not know lottery, about bro. this? So it's either win the lottery or die on a roller coaster. So, I'm so just... Yeah, dude. I mean, no, either it's, one. It's up in the air. You don't get, you don't get both. I gotta try to figure Flip it out. Flip a coin. Flip yeah. a coin a couple times, yeah. But, oh, man, dude, that one, that one, my teammates had my back. And, uh, you know, legitimately, if I can trust them that much, dude, how can you not trust them on the field, bro? Right? <laughs> That's a good dude, point, let me tell I you, uh, Thank God we did that after we were one and three. If we did that before, holy shit, we would have been way better. <sighs> oh. Could you imagine? Yeah. Uh, I mean, we can, uh, I guess we can recap your guys' weekend a little bit while you're, while you're going. Uh, semi-pro. Oh, you're good, bro. You're good. No, oh, it's, good, it's chilling. Uh, semi-pro, you guys played uh, on the lone wolf field, or split some was on the asian yeah field, it was, it was split field. some half but and half right i guess what i'm saying is you guys were actually live streamed and televised for the first time in your nxl careers so you know mm. how did that feel you guys got to go up to the big boy you uh you won your first game uh i didn't get to see that game i saw some of the greenville growl game you guys should have won that game too uh I agree completely. but yeah so i mean talk us through your guys this weekend what happened with semi-pro so uh let me just say bro with all these people that are like talking shit, right? It's like, dude, if you haven't even played anywhere near that level, dude, you can't even comprehend how like different it is. Talking right? shit is on a... you guys? What? I'm confused. And what just is in this? general, just in general, right? Okay. Because it's like I see people to just like talking shit on like on Instagram, just in general, right? On anybody's clip. Talking shit about what? I guess that's that's what I'm confused about. Someone will be just fucking shooting their gun, and they'll be talking shit. Okay. You know who I'm talking about? I'm talking about I'm talking about that one. Ah, fuck, I don't want to say But that, okay, out. that's different because that's that's a completely different thing that you're talking about. I feel like a lot of people recognize that semi-pro is a fucking difficult division to compete well in. And if you don't, you obviously have never played the sport. Right, yeah, but the like, thing is, right, people will, all, people will always be talking shit anyway, right? Um, well, yeah, Fit won the event. People are probably like, they're a horrible-ass team right now. That's that's just what happens. I mean, people are hating on Dynasty. They won eight in a row or some shit. I don't know. They keep point. winning. Like, people are always going to hate. That's a valid point, right? But, um, dude, it really is a completely different pace of game. Uh, it's like, it made it feel like everything I've played before this is like checkers. Not chess. Yeah. <laughs> right. And, uh, cause it's like, dude, everybody you play against, dude, fucking insanely smart players. Mm hmm Right. There are, there are no easy games, right? There'll still and be some kind of smaller personal mistakes that you'll see, but the general, like, that's what, having, that's what loses you the game. Yeah. But the general, like, you know 
this team just doesn't understand this layout. That doesn't happen in semi-pro. Like you just, no. you, you're not going to get that game of like, well, they, I don't know what they're doing, but it's not working. So we're just going to keep going. Mm. Yeah. And the thing is, right. But dude, we were like the practice leading up, dude, we were playing the field. So aggressive. Mm-hmm. Right. I think a lot and of then, teams were at first. Yeah. And then dude, once yeah. you get to that, like, you know, the paintball tournament, dude, shit locked up and even adding the little cake made it a little bit faster. I think it, right. I think it, that cake honestly dramatically changed the snake side in my opinion. I agree. I think yeah. that one little bunker changed the entire layout. Because it so changed our whole game plan. That was one of my favorite angles to shoot because you had so many different shots that you could get from that lane, the snake lane, the Dorito, uh, like that whole open box. lane. Uh, it would help you out so much. And then when they put that there, I was like, that's going to change things a lot. I did not see anyone getting nearly as aggressive on that snake side, like off the breakout. Mm-hmm. Like, there were still guys, you know, sending it up to, like, the the little, like, race wing. Um, you know, that tower. I saw some of that on the breakout. But I wasn't seeing as many guys just straight getting up there as I did in practice. Mm-hmm. So, uh, in general, uh, our New Jersey's Jesters game, that game was back and forth. Um, you guys conquered them. Say- Yep, we did. You know, the thing is, like, I've been I waiting never, for that I, one. <laughs> and I never, I never didn't want to say, you guys know this, quote me on this one. Uh, I don't want to call a semi pro until we win a match. Right? Well, you did that at first, least. Right? First goal accomplished, right? Could have gone, could have been way worse. I would could've say with a point. Point. that would have been my goal, <laughs> to be honest, right? but fire. I must have some high expectations. I guess man, you do. Guess. <laughs> right? So, uh, hey, we, we did go out, win our first point. Okay, well, then there you go. Yeah, so you're like, all right, that's over. (laughs) And um, so we we should kind of be here. (laughs) Yes, exactly. It's like, like, okay, we can hang, right? You got to get better, but, you know, we're in the ballpark. Exactly, right? So the way how I was saying it, right, is now we may not be on the same page, but we're at least in the same chapter now, right? Yeah. And uh, we're getting closer. Because honestly, like, sorry, just – you're talking about the same page, same chapter thing. Fit and Blast Camp are writing their own chapter ahead of everyone else in the Exactly, bro. Those guys are like, so I, fucking good. Dude, those are the teams we're going to see at the top of every event. And I hate to say it, it's because Fit is legitimately a pro team. That is a yeah, pro lineup. They, they just they can't get their spot. Dallas. And because FSU got, you know, double points, they didn't get the spot. So it's like, shit, <laughs> I guarantee to you, Colt Lucal, Trent Mason, Chavez, uh, those guys, they, they fucking want to earn that pro spot back and show that they were supposed to be there. So now imagine that's what you're fighting against. <laughs> like, yeah. Oh, my the God. Thing is, the thing is, I, I'm excited because I want to play against that, right? I want to play against that's how you the get better. fucking best of the best, right? Because how are you going to get better? Like, if you're going to get better playing the fucking, the fucking Green Bay Goblins all fucking, all day, right? You're not going to get, you're not going to get better playing, playing people like that. No, you're, and you're true. Ask Camp, Fit, dude. Yeah. uh, No, I get GG Factory. Those guys were good. Mm -hmm. I was going to say any, you know, any high level player in this game will tell you that you should go get shit on by someone for a long ass time because you're going to learn all your mistakes. You're going to learn, oh, he punished me for that. He punished me for that. Now, if you don't have a good mindset about it, you'll probably flounder out of the game. But the yeah. best players in the world got there by having the best players in the world at the time beat them down. I agree. And, you know, it kind of reminds me of like what Paul said, right? When it's like that, uh, that, that distance of learning, right? Mm-hmm. Where it's mm-hmm. like, right? The ZPD. You, know, you can't. J- Right, you can't just say like you can't just say, "Oh, I want to practice a pro team," right? And yeah, be like, if if like I go and play Dynasty, I'm not learning shit. <laughs> I'm right? just dying out of my bunker, and I'm confused as all hell. Right at that point, when it comes to chapter and pages, not, at that point, you're not mm-hmm. even in the right book yet. I'm, oh, yes, a hundred. Right? So not not even the right chapter. You're not even in the right book yet. Right? I'm still on so, Paintball Intro 101, <laughs> and they're on winning tournaments I'm, 304. I'm still playing Greg Hastings, baby. <laughs> Wiping that shit. Wipe it. Right? Yeah. So, the dude, the Killers game, those guys are some fucking good paintball players. Yeah. Wow. Those guys straight Killers, up shit on us. Dude, I, I wanted to text uh, so good. I, I, one of the guys on Killers, uh, Ryan Hosky, something like that. Uh, I met him at Sunshine, uh, the Golden State Open, the one here last year. Dude, I wanted to text him and be like, why'd you do that to my boys? Like, come on, they needed some uh, morale here. <laughs> Let them have one. And the thing is, dude, I, I like those guys, the killer guys. Those guys have a great attitude, and I think those guys are really about growing paintball, right? Yeah. Those guys are some straight up ballers. They're killers. Right? <laughs> they, they really right? are. Exactly. <laughs> right? And uh, I really hope we get to play them in the future, right? That'd be but sick, dude, yeah. I think that legitimately, 
that's going to be though. I think those guys legitimately have a run at the pro spot as well. Straight up. Yeah. Those guys are good. We'll have to see. I really like for me this year, it's going to be which team beats fit. Cause I, I honestly think fit is the best pro team or the best semi pro team in that league. And the main reason why is cause they're looking at it like a pro team, you know, fucking the Lucal family, they're blessed with literally owning their own paintball park and being able to go mm-hmm. out there you know, when the layout dropped, they were out there Wednesday through Monday because they were also yeah. practicing diesel and they were out there the same exact time, too. So it's like this is a team that is so kind of above that, like, all right, everyone's here to play hard. We're all committed. We're going to be at practices. They're putting in the extra time. So now it's kind of yeah. like, is another team going to be able Damn, to match I wish that, I could do that? Or I wish I could fucking do are that. they going to get the spot? So it'll be interesting to see. You still got to win. You know, you still got to play four more events to get that spot. But it's definitely going to be exactly. interesting to see. And it's so, dude, Semi Pro is so competitive. Don't oh. fuck up once, it's almost over. Yeah. No, it's crazy. Right. It's like, but the thing is, right, with double points, it's almost like you can do decent and get a pro spot in a way. Right, we just calling out notorious right now, or no, no, not at all, not at all. They got, dude, they got, a, they got a third place, and uh, didn't they win? Didn't they get a win in? Uh, they got a win, go but four? it was one of those things. If double points hadn't happened, they wouldn't have gotten that spot. Right, but the thing is, they did get it, right? Yeah. Because they did put double points, and that's a yeah. Crazy thing I think because people, I, don't know. I think there are going to be teams. I think there are going to be teams literally accounting on that now. I, but that's bullshit. Like, I, I get what you're saying that, like, okay, it's you won World Cup, you get double points. I still feel like that's bullshit. Like, when in our sport have you been able to win the last event and then, like, win the series? Like, it's always think... been a fucking grinder throughout the year, fucking dynasty for excessive, you know, all that shit back in the day, mm. to then win the series championship. And if you're just kind of middling, like, you know, fourth, fifth, you're around that podium, maybe one of those events, and then you win Cup and you get to become a pro team... I honestly don't feel like you deserved it versus the team that was in the finals every single event and then just I mean, wasn't able to have enough points. Or I think they did drop well, down one, but 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 then I mean you take the year before that with the the Hurricanes, the New Orleans Hurricanes. I don't think they made it in the finals at all, and they're just consistent enough that they they won the That's title. Spot. That's true. Yeah. And but then I think that goes to show like what what do we talk about when it comes to you know a team being good enough to move up to that pro spot like i don't know man if you can't win an event in semi-pro i don't think you should be in pro and that's no offense to the hurricanes because i think they've done a great job at building a roster that can compete in pro but honestly man like pro everybody can do that pro is that much like harder like you guys were saying semi-pro is a step up now add another 10th layer onto that and that's fucking like the pro game yeah literally it's like uh, dylan boyum dylan boyum told me this he goes uh it takes 10,000 hours just to be pro. It takes 10,000 hours just to stay there. Yeah. Or it takes 10,000 more just to, to stay, stay there. there. Yeah. Because and everyone wants to, oh, <sighs> sick. We're in, you know, we made it, guys. We're here. And Love then that. they get to yeah, go I against that, fucking infamous impact damage. Like some of the 10 best teams we've seen on the paintball planet ever. Like you're telling me you're trying to beat the Edwards brothers. Good luck, fam. Because, like, it's just one of those things that's so hard to be a dude who's been doing this his whole entire life. And the thing is, right, the next the next generation, dude, I wonder what I – it's like when is the next generation going to come in, right? Because it's like, dude, this even still – like, Dynasty's still owning, right? And yeah. those guys are – Well, a, a couple generations ago, they're still I think winning. we're seeing the next generation start to creep in. Shout out to Chris Caputo from uh, Brooklyn Bears. He got some like great play guy. time. Uh, I have a nasty clip of him getting a barrel hit and no one else seeing it. So, you know, shout out. Good job, Chris. Um, But I don't know. It's it's one of those things like when those guys finally step away and retire, I think the game is going to get really shaken up. But until then, it's just kind of this consistency of like, I mean, hell, look at anything like uh, it's like me trying to make a film that's better than Steven Spielberg's motherfuckers been doing this 20 years before I was even born. Like, eventually, I may be able to get as talented as he is, but it's going to take me time. that same amount of time to get there. And so it's just like comparing yourself to someone who's, you know, shit. That, like, how old is, like, Chris, you know, trying to think about that? Like, I guarantee you Dynasty was playing paintball before he was at a field, like, or, you know, even playing the sport or anything like that. And now they're playing on the same field, trying, you know, Chris is trying to beat those guys. It's going to be kind of yeah. hard, objectively. Yeah. When your idols become your rivals, you know? No, that's a good point. Another 
I mean, another kind of your idols become your something. I don't know. Because for me, it's a little different. I, I'm not fighting against any of these guys. I'm, I'm working for them. Um, but that was really cool. I got invited to uh, Dynasty's dinner at Charlie's. So I was able to kind of go and, and enjoy some really nice steak <laughs> with the team. Mm-hmm. Um, Charlie's is all they talk about it to be. It is freaking amazingly good. Uh, the scalloped potatoes or some shit I had. Oh, my God. That was, that was fire. Uh, but... <laughs> my funny anecdote from uh from the the the, the dinner is uh, I was sitting next to Blake Yarber and his wife uh Laura and uh about 5 minutes after they bring out the steaks I'm you know I'm getting through mine I'm enjoying it I'm going to be lost I, or I was going to be honest I was kind of lost in my own steak world for a little bit there cuz I was like oh my god this is the best thing I've ever tasted this is insane uh but I look over to my right Blake is literally cutting up his steak with a Swiss army knife <laughs> this this motherfucker pulls it out of his pocket and i was like damn blake are you you know are you seriously using your like own multi-tool and he's like yeah it's sharp as fuck <laughs> and i was and, like uh, respect the yeah, waiters blake. are like uh what do we do about that <laughs> they didn't like, care they're probably like, they're probably like hey dude this guy's using a swiss army knife Look, like don't sell that guy shit the amount of money our tab was i don't think they gave a single shit mm. oh i bet <laughs> because i'm just was... sitting there looking at the prices and i'm like oh my god like yeah, that looks like for, a nice for ass broke dinner. boy Ryan. That's that's some insane shit. <laughs> you know, even if they did give a shit, if I see someone pull out their own knife to use to use to cut cut their steak at my my goddamn restaurant, I'm not saying anything to that man. Yeah, that's not a dude you want to fuck with. No, <laughs> I agree. I think that's I think that's a uh, that's a different level of manliness. You know, <laughs> different <laughs> level of just brute built different. Probably, you know, like probably like goddamn dude. Who let uh? I would, oh, fuck me! I just had a, a, a good dude, survival oh my God. in my head. This reminded me of another up. story from that too, dude. Fucking Harrison Fry. <laughs> so fucking the dude comes out to show all the cuts of beef they have. You know they do the like, you know they have the saran wrapped cuts that they normally do. Mm. And so he's going through his whole thing, and he gets to one piece, and Harrison looks at him, and he's like, "Can I slap the beef?" <laughs> and this waiter was like, "No, sir. No, no, you cannot <laughs> slap the beef." <laughs> it was fucking. It's one of those moments I'm like, God damn, Harry. That's fucking funny. Slap the fucking beef. Yeah. But uh yeah, it was it was good. Those uh those two guys got their first pro win. Um I mean that's like crazy story for freaking Chris. He's never even played in a finals. He's, he's made quarters yeah. a couple times, he's made semis, I think, once or twice with the repo. They never got to the final dance. And uh first time he did it with Dynasty, they they took they the won. crown. That's I like Chris here. I think he is a very, very talented player. I think he is uh, I think he's been underrated for a while. I remember when he actually, correct me if I'm wrong, he played on Omaha Vicious back in the day, I'm pretty sure. I believe he did. I think I've heard that before too. Oh. Again, I could be wrong as well, but that sounds correct to me. Right, so um, he's been in the game for a while, right? Not mm-hmm. even So not even making the finals and making the semis, so, you know, a couple times, right? And finally getting that, like, sweet taste of victory. Dude, that must feel so fucking good. Oh, dude, like, I relate it to, like, the Boyan Brothers, for instance. Those dudes have played paintball their whole life. They've, you know, been in kind of the higher echelon of it. Until last year, you know, at World Cup, they've never really played Sunday paintball. Like, yeah. they, they just don't get to do that anymore. And, like, hopefully the Ironmen will, will have a good year and they'll be able to play Sunday a couple times. But, you know, you think about that. Like, not very many dudes have won a professional paintball tournament. Most of them are still in the sport playing today. <laughs> And it's like yeah. they're almost gatekeeping that. <laughs> like, nah, no, nah, we're we're still gonna win. Can't beat you guys yet. Yeah, and dude, Dynasty, bro, that shit really is fucking magic. I used to, it is. I used to it actually literally not even is, be yeah. a Dynasty guy, right? I used to be like, ah, Dynasty's kind of overrated, right? But now I'm like, dude, like, if I'm being honest, ever since uh, Mike Arena like legitimately joined that team, like, dude, Dynasty, I've like, I've met the guys, I've been way more friendly with the guys, dude. Those guys are some fucking seriously great people. Right. Yeah. When it comes to serious pioneers and ambassadors of the sport, dude, you can't even think about it without mentioning them. Right. Mm-hmm. Alex Frazier, hell of a fucking guy. I like that guy. So nice. Every, he, bro, I've seen him. I see him handing out hormesis, bro. That shit is so badass, bro. I wish. I hope that one day I can be to the point to where I can do that shit. I want to be around paintball so much to where that shit's my job eventually. Right. Somehow. Mm-hmm. Somehow. Some aspect right? of it. Yeah. Right. And uh, dude, that shit you. Even when you, even when Alex is fucking old, using a cane and a walker, bro, <laughs> right? He'll still be at the paintball field. He'll still be having to, something to do with paintball, right? He'll still be giving he's, tips, bro. What if he's the next fucking Maddie Marshall, bro? 
Imagine that. Ooh. Could be. I mean, he's he's a lifer. You know, there's there's a couple of Without those dudes that you could tell they they found this game at a young age and they didn't want to do anything else with their life. And it's worked out for a lot of them. Um, for some, it hasn't. But, you know, for the guys on, you know, Dynasty and, you know, a couple of these other legends, like you were mentioning, you know, Rich, Maddie, they've kind of made something in the sport for themselves. And it's really kind of cool to see. Uh, dude, th- the reason this sport exists is love. Like, it's it's because all these dudes loved it so much when it was in its really hype and heyday that they were able to stick with it when, you know, 2010 happened and all the money dried up. We wouldn't be here if it wasn't for those dudes who were like, yeah, but we love this. We're going to keep doing this crazy thing and, and hope it works out. <laughs> so all it's, for it's the just, love of the game. Dude, the love of I mean, the game, bro. Well, and that's, dude, that's... that's that- one of my favorite quotes from Maddie. Sorry to interrupt you, but you reminded me of that with that is the gifts of the game. They're not monetary. They're not, you know, you're you're not your bank account isn't going to get way bigger because you play this game at a good level. But what you are going to get is you're going to get to travel to some amazing places. You're going to meet some amazing people. And for a while, I never understood that until I was able to kind of live it a little bit. And Maddie's 100 percent right. <laughs> like paintball people are just a different breed of people i I don't know how to describe it if you aren't involved with the sport it really is just like a uh, go brando go brando go sorry brandon yeah (laughs) yeah so uh talking yeah i was explaining uh, talking to michelle about it today how just every tournament that uh we've been to the this past year and 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 this past one it's it's gotten more and more, uh, uh, just more fun. I, I've I've enjoyed it more and more, and you know, I've traveled in the past with with other teams and and all the the OG Ironman guys and they're you know all the old guys hearing the stories is really cool. But it's something different when it's guys my age. We all have the same mindset. We're we're we're, we're doing the, we're playing for the same reasons, playing for each other and everything. And then on top of that, I'm making all the friends. Um, and then seeing all the old guys that that uh, I've met through all the OG Ironman guys and all just all these relations relationships, it's 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 so great. I love it. I really do love it. And it again every tournament it's gotten better and better and more fun. And I can't wait. I mean, we oh. we just got back and I'm dude. I'm like, Texas Damn. is in six weeks and I'm counting down the days. Like let's yeah. go. <laughs> let's. I can't Ladies, wait. Bro. Fucking, you know, you you hit you really hit the nail on the head there because it's like. You know, one of my favorite reasons for going to events, it's not to get blown up by paintballs getting good footage. I like doing that. That is a a thing I enjoy about going to events. But the reason I go to every event is to see the people. It's to see Maddie. Mm -hmm. It's to it's to talk to him for a couple minutes, because every time I do, I learn something new, whether it's history, whether it's about our game, whether it's about the history of our game. Like he just knows so much. So I just love talking to him, you know, seeing guys like freaking you know, all the dynasty guys, like I now work with them in a kind of, you know, a capacity. So it's like, it's kind of cool to kind of share these moments of like, yeah, I was on the field with you guys for that, you know, like, oh damn, I saw that play happen, you know, shit like that. And even going back to like the media house, like when we get back home, like we're all thinking of ideas. We're all, you know, trying to be creative, you know, trying to get new reels out and stuff like that. Um, to the point where even like this weekend, uh, we filmed a video of me mic'd up during one of the Saturday sets and that wouldn't have happened if three of us weren't, you know, sitting there talking at 12 a.m. Like, what would be a good idea? Like, how could we, you know, do some more stuff? And eventually that idea came out. Um, and shout out that that video will be out later on in the week. Um, but yeah, so uh, I, I don't know. Paintball, you know, like you said, Brandon, it's just getting more and more fun. And I don't know why, but I very much share that uh, that that philosophy. And I think, you know. To get a little personal here, you know, paintball really fucking helped me, man. Like, fuck, last year before the first event, a girl who I legitimately was very much in love with left me. And that was really hard to deal with. The way I dealt with it, I went to the paintball field and VG made me laugh freaking every single weekend. And it made me want to keep going. It made me want to try to do more on this shit. And that's, that's why I honestly, you know, equate to last year was a very big year for me because I just I had nothing to lose and I just wanted to have fun and you know do shit around paintball and I think that you know that that shows to people whether they understand the reasons behind it or not they can see that kind of connection to the game so yeah man I mean dude paintball paintball is everything to me 
dude, paintball saved my fucking life. I wasn't, dude, Ryan, bro. I was in a very similar situation, right? Dude, the girl I was dating for four years, bro, fucking ended up shitting yeah. on my ass, right? So it's like, dude. And then the next, dude, the next, like a couple more weeks, dude, we win World Cup, right? So it's like, dude, that is like, that high was like anything that she could have ever fucking given me low key. Right? <laughs> it was, dude, it was a fucking neck. And dude, the fact that it's like, bro, the embrace that you get from your fucking family after, not your yeah. fucking boy, dude. Your, fa- your fucking yeah. family. Would you, no, you when you hugged Logan, Cup? you guys weren't bro. you guys weren't friends there. You dude, guys were that brothers. That was a fucking embrace. That, yeah, I no joke, dude. Yeah, I'm glad that I got shit. pictures of that one. That was yeah. meaningful. <laughs> whenever I th- whenever I think of like that moment, dude, I low key get emotional, dude, because it's like, bro, like you know, hugging my mom after hugging Cedar, bro, like, dude, seeing my dude, first person, one of the first person to come see me after the after I uh, after I got through the crowd, bro, Mike fucking Urena. That, and dude, that yep. felt so good, bro. Because it's like, dude, he knows how hard I work, right? He knows oh, how hard yeah. we work, right? Dude, I he... well, dude, it's funny you say this, uh, Hatch, because I have a similar moment with the Dynasty guy. When we went down to play Mech X Ball, it turns out Blake was also there, and he ended up being on our team. So he wasn't on the line with us, but he was on our team. Um, so the way it worked down there is, you know, it was drafted so like there was no official team so it was just like hey you guys are on this team you guys are on this team and then from there they broke down lines kind of like you know the the d1 pro line the d2 line d3 they kind of went down um and dude we over time one-on-one i fucking shoot this kid out and go down hang the point i come back into the pits blake is in my face fucking going insane and I remember someone next to me even said it. They're like, dude, your face lit up like crazy. Because that was a moment that, like, I've seen him do to, you know, all the guys on the team. I've seen him go to Dalton to do that same shit when Dalton had a crazy play. But, like, seeing him, like, almost have that pride in me at that moment, dude, I I, I can't describe it. Like, that'll forever be one of my favorite yeah, paintball bro. moments. Because, dude, I yeah, I get chills thinking about it. And also, you know, I probably won't ever tell Blake that, but you know, I, I always try to kind of act cool around the guys and not, not let them know that this is really cool for me. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, hell, even getting dinner with them, it's like, that was fucking weird. Like those were the guys that 12 year old me spent hours watching on YouTube. And now I'm like in the same steakhouse eating dinner with them. (laughs) That's, I don't know. That shit will always blow my mind. And that's one of the reasons why like people will probably never understand my love for this game, but I, you know, it's in me and I, and I have it. It's, it's people outsiders dude if you're not in it bro they just will never understand bro they're just like you fucking like going out shooting fucking gelatinous fucking balls and i'm like yeah, dude, dude. well that even addiction. reminds me of another great quote from maddie when oliver lang was coming back in that hk video he even says he's like i've never had so many dudes send me the same exact message about another guy coming back to play war and that message was this warms my heart paintball is a funny thing that like that's pretty much his quote and he's just he's spot on there like we're, we're going out to fucking kill other dudes and simulate you know war in a way but at the same time like it's just such a center for like love and respect it's like yo we all like to do this crazy thing so respect man tip the hat you know it's just such a it, it's a phenomena that you won't understand until you're in it but not not only in it but you find that team. Mm-hmm. Yeah. When you find that team, dude, like my last team, I thought I found that, right? I was like, dude, this is a family. And then it's like, bro, then I found the DM, like my boys from DMG, mm-hmm. bro. And it's like, the thing is, right? I've had people, I've had people flood in the team, come in and out, right? And the thing is, right? They weed themselves out, right? People who are truly are not about the love and the passion of the fucking game, they will weed themselves out. Best way I can say it is, you know, Micah, Logan, AK, those boys, like Cedar, fucking, they, they don't go anywhere. <laughs> like, yeah, fucking uh, other guys have been on that roster and they've come and left, but that guy, I don't know that that team. I've always felt that about you guys. Like even when you guys were in like D, you know, D, uh, D three last year, but even like before that, you could always see there was just like this kind of special unit to you guys, and it's. I, you know, I'm, I don't want to like speak out of turn here, but it's that same type of bond that early Frazier, Yosh, Ryan, and Oliver had. Like, it's that same type of like, dude, we're, we're, we're going to be here every weekend, not because we necessarily love this, but because I don't want to let you down, man. Like, I don't want to come out here and be shitty and then lose us a point because like, I care about you that much, bro. 
and dude the expectation that we hold each other at with that right brando you already know bro it's like dude we'll win a point and someone will point out and be like dude you fucked up here here and here you did good here but you messed up here right? <laughs> you did good here <laughs> right and it's dude it is so constructive to where um even when we're mad right we and we're yelling we know that it's like okay eh, hatch is just on his fucking bullshit again let's just hear him out right we all know right and uh because obviously right I'm the, I'm the most intense one on the fucking team right dude so when i get fucking pissed and shit's going down we're making mistakes dude i am like fuck who wants this more right i'm like who wants this more like dude because to compete in semi-pro it's like dude i we you gotta have to want it more than fucking blast camp pb fit fucking everybody bro it's like even just to compete right you have to sh and you have to show that you want it right practice I, at practice, we really show how much we want it, especially compared to the other teams out there, right? And uh, shout out, shout out to Cody uh, on one of the lower, on like the D four, D five line. Yes. Yeah. Uh, shout out to him, dude. Him and his team, bro. That like I'm starting to see that in those guys, right? Those guys are, dude. We are grinding on. We are grinding till sunset, and look who's on the other field. They are, right? Yeah, that's dude. that DMG Pink squad, bro. Right, mm -hmm. and it's like, dude. When you have the fucking heart like that, dude, anything is achievable. I think those guys are going to go very, very far. And it's like, it makes me want to help them even more. Because, like, dude, I want those guys to be my teammates eventually, mm -hmm. right? Dude, the, got to feed the program somehow. Right? Yeah. No, and I mean, like, uh, shit, you know, one of these days, Brandon might just, you know, get that surgery, surgery, might get that surgery offer and just, he's gone, you know? He's he's off in Oklahoma or some shit. I don't think that's happening. But if it does, you know, you need a replacement. It could. <laughs> legitimately. Damn, that's some... Some depressing thought to feel damn brando feels yeah. like me after a roller coaster right now bro he's, he's, hurt. <laughs> he's hurt he's hurt right now but, no dude. but i guess the, the point i'm making is you know it's a quote from moneyball but at every you know at every point in time in someone's life you're told you can stop you have to stop playing the kids game and some people get told at 17 some people get told at 40 but at some point you're told and i loved that kind of that quote because it's like dude that's yeah like you, you can love this game but sometimes you just have to go do other things and that's okay paintball will always be here i think that's one of the the things i realized when i had to you know leave during 2018 2019 and then 2020 2021 came right back and you know it was it was still there <laughs> like, like a glove the family like yeah glove. so hey dude and plus it's like you know it's such a family aspect to where you dude you even people who have never played before like we can be like hey bro Come use my fucking gun, hmm. right? Go crazy, right? Like Cedar, Cedar's Cedar's fiance now, because I can I can say that now. They got they got engaged. They did, yay! Uh, I didn't hear that. Congrats, shout out oh, to yeah. that, right? And uh, she was she went to, to practice with him one time, right? While we were practicing, and uh, I'm like, "What's up? You gonna play today?" And she goes, "I don't have anything." <laughs> That's not an excuse. <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> all of us, all of us got her gear, dude. I gave her my extra loader. She had like an extra gun, dude. She gave her my gave her my pants, right? Some pads, right? Mm -hmm. And she just went out there and fucking played, right? And the thing is, with my boy Anthony Juicebox, I'm gonna do that to him very soon, right? Where it's like, okay. it might not be a very serious practice, not a layout, right? But it's like, dude, imagine what it's gonna be like for him, where it's like, all right, uh, the line is me, Brando, Logan, Micah, and Anthony, just a <laughs> random guy that's never played paintball, dude. Before. But dude, that's gonna be an but, experience for him. That he's never felt and to give the background on who juice box is he's in hatches discord we play games with him a lot dude. um so that's why he, he'll know all those guys he'll actually probably be really comfortable calming with them yeah, <laughs> just not on right? a paintball field and it's like dude i've known i've known anthony for so long eventually i want to try to get him on here because dude that guy's a funny motherfucker god damn uh but he i've known him for so long so uh him, incorporating him into it dude that'd be so much fun right yeah just, even if it's just like a one weekend thing, right? Where he's still doing his normal stuff. But it's like, dude, if I can just get a moment like that, dude, that's, he's going to have a fucking blast. You, you can do that with a lot of people, right? Mm -hmm. Where, dude, if you're if you're playing paintball at a normal field, dude, or ask someone to play paintball. Hey, uh, Timmy from math class, <laughs> you want to go play some paintball this weekend? Let's go. Yeah, right? I mean, dude, dude, I had I had that same guy. Uh, I mean, shit, shout out Caleb uh i haven't i haven't talked to him in a long time but 
when we were both, you know, 10, 11, 12, that's like, that was my dude. Like we went to the fields together, you know, we were always texting each other about how, how could we play a tournament? Is there any way we could get funding for that? Like how expensive are they? You know, all that shit. Mm -hmm. And yeah, man, like I haven't seen him in a while, but if I saw that dude today, I'd fucking run up and hug him. (laughs) Like, you know, it's uh, paintball is different. If you're, if you're getting shot at by other men and you have another man standing beside you, you're now best friends with him. I don't care if it's paint bullets or, you know, BBs or actual rounds going off. Like, there's just something about that that just creates a bond. That instinct, that snap mode where you're like, dude, all right, it's fight or flight right now, bro. We're fighting (laughs) together. You know know how excited I was when when we saw Nick Horn? Oh, (laughs) Nick Horn. Shout out to Nick Horn. Dude, holy fuck. That was an amazing fuck, dude. Nick Horn, he was, he played for our team last year, right? Guy lives in Ohio, right? That just shows his dedication. Wow. Wow. Yeah, down in Ohio, right? We're in fucking <laughs> sicko mode, right? And, uh, dude, he, you know, obviously this year we were taking things way more serious, right? Since we're semi pro, right? So it's like he could make all the practices. So, uh, you know, right? God gave him the boot in a way, right? Uh, but, dude, seeing him, seeing him, uh, but the thing is, right? It was, it was a, it was a thing where he was like, dude, I know you guys are taking this so serious, right? He's like, I can't make every practice, and that's what you guys need. You need an every practice type of guy. Right. So he's playing D2 with struggle. I mean, I, I know another guy who's in a similar boat who wants to be on that line and wants to help you guys out, but he, he knows he can't commit. And so he's not going to, you know, he's not going to hold you guys down to do that. I'm not, I'm not saying his name just in case, but yeah. Okay. I know, I know who you're talking about. Yeah, Uh, no, but like, I mean, there's, there's something about the semi pro team. Like people, people want to see you guys succeed. And I think obviously it will happen with time. I think, you know, thinking in texas you're gonna be on sunday i think that's a little too big for your britches but i think it's it one of those time. things that it yeah time. it takes time right. and grinding away at these events matches. is gonna get you guys even more you know even more kind of ready for those challenges and mm-hmm. shit right and now our goal is to win two matches yeah right so it's like dude, go two and two takes, and then that's where takes, okay potentially right. we'll make sunday from that exactly, and then uh, right? maybe you can play in a uh, quarters or some shit like it, it's and- that slow grind one thing that really took me for a trip, right, when it's like, like that you brought up, you know, people want to see us succeed. Dude, shout out to Gavin, Brando. Yeah. Take it away. Take it away. Gavin. Gavin, 15-year-old from North Dakota, ended up coming out to his first NXL event. Um, I think he was only there for one day for, for the Sunday. And, uh, yeah, he chose when the we best saw day. Him, That's, yeah, if you ever make dude, it to an event, yeah. go on Sunday. That's all I say, yeah. And, and he, he was walking around with the, one of the DMG practice jerseys. And... Like at, we were at a booth, uh, uh, waiting to take a picture with one of our sponsors, and he's, he's, he's staring at us. He's looking at us. I, and, it, dude, it, I spoke up. I said yeah. something. I got, the thing is, right? He was. I saw him staring at me before, right? And so I walked past. I walked to another booth to, to the World War Paint booth, then walked back, and I go, dude, looking good in that jersey, bro. Looking fire, right? Then uh, he's like, thanks, man. Thanks, man. And then he's just like staring at us. And I walk over to Brandon. I'm like, dude. I'm like, dude. Is that guy staring at us? Right. And he is right. And Brando goes, he goes, dude, I definitely feel the eyes. Right. I definitely. So, <laughs> yeah. so uh, we're, we're taking pictures with our sponsors right after he walk, he walks up to Logan. And he goes, can I get you guys his autograph? And Logan goes, me? <laughs> oh, funny, fucking Logan. Right? And uh, so, dude, I was like, I, I was like, what the fuck? Kid wants our autograph. That was like, that was next level humbling. Yeah. Right. I mean, Fuck, I, I I had a train of thought I was gonna go there, and then it kind of kind of jumped at the end there. Um, right. Since Marvel. Sh- oh yeah, the like, like autographs and shit. Uh, I've seen a couple comments on this on like online. If you ever see a professional paintball player, or someone you know in a higher division that you want to talk to, like you maybe think they're cool, go up and talk to them. Like I I shit you not, and this is why I always say we'll if talk. you see one of us at a field, come talk to us. Like, it's fun. We love doing that. We love meeting you guys. Um, and so I know the same goes. If you see Dynasty at an event and you want to meet them and say hi, go well, say stop, hi. Stop. They, they I guarantee you they will sit there for a couple of minutes. They'll ask you your name. They'll kind of, you know, they'll see what you're doing. And maybe they have to go and run somewhere and they can't give you that time. That does happen at events. But I saw this kid, uh, one of the comments about like the layout practice here, here at Capital Edge. He's like, damn, I should have went up and said something to Dynasty. And I was like, dude, you do it. Like, don't have do that it, regret bro. because they will not be upset with you. They love that too. They, they, you know, it's cool to them and it's cool to us that you guys like, you know, what we're doing so much to not only be fans of it, but also, you know, come say hi if we're at an event together. Absolutely, dude. And dude, 
the paintball the paintball community it ain't like the nfl right it's like dude we dude, we'll remember you bro all everybody <laughs> that, dude they, they'll remember they'll remember right dude gavin dude i will never forget gavin that was like an experience that gave me the amount of dopamine as a roller coaster let me just say <laughs> <laughs> and uh got all that so, serotonin so when we uh so when we sign, we're signing his jerseys. He's like, "Yeah, dude, I'm just like a big fan of you guys." Like, and I'm like, "Holy shit, bro! That has ne- never even occurred to me." Mm-hmm. Can so, I? <laughs> so this is definitely a different train of thought, and I want to jump to it because I've wanted to tell this story all, all podcast. I'm I'm gonna do it now. Um, so I'm pretty sure Alex Frazier is is becoming a director and not a paintball player anymore. <laughs> dude, um, the camera. Well, so not just the camera. So let me set up the scene. I'm filming. It's uh, the semifinals. So Damage is playing Heat and Dynasty is in the other uh, game on that set. I'm out filming uh, the Edwards brothers because they're some of the people that we're trying to get footage of for the Hormesis project. And <laughs> as I'm filming, uh, Jacob Edwards, like I see him do like the crazy shot he'll do where he put his gun all the way over his head on the bunker. I don't know if you guys ever seen him do it, but it's it's hilarious. And I'm pretty sure he shot a kid out while doing it. And so I have that angle of him. And behind me, I hear Alex go, oh, damn, did you get that shot, Ryan? And I kind of like, oh, I, you know, I kind of laugh to myself. I'm like, damn, you know, Alex is watching me. Oh, that's funny. And then another like run through happens right in front of me. And Alex is like, you're getting all the good shit, Ryan. <laughs> and I look back and I was like, Frazier, aren't you in a match right now? <laughs> and he just kind of like shook his head. And I was like, man, come on. So, yeah, Dynasty wasn't scared during the semifinals. I could tell you that at least, or at least Alex wasn't. I think that people who have that switch where they can still be, you know, the friendly, funny guy, bro, that those people are the funnest to be around. Yeah. Well, Alex, Alex Frazier, dude, that guy, dude, he will take it. He will be lasered in making a fucking joke right he he is one of the funniest guys i've ever met and i think a lot of that comes from and i you know i, I don't know this this is just kind of suggest you know from seeing videos and shit like that i think alex was a lot more uh like a harsh competitor driven not really the funny guy i think he was always a kind of a comedian but you know he was serious like okay we're at paintball we're at fucking paintball you know doing doing that mm-hmm. shit and I, I just think, you know, getting older, being a dad, like stuff like that. Like, I don't know. He's, he's looking at the game a little differently now. And dude, I, I for one love it. Like it's, it's hilarious to Dude's be around him fun. in the pits. He's like, having more yeah. fun than like play, 70% of the pro team. There's a reason the Hormesis has teams. a line called play like a kid. Like that's, that's what this motherfucker is doing. That, shit. <laughs> uh, that, that whole quote and that whole concept of play like a kid, dude, I will live by that shit, dude. I look, you want to I low key get that shit tatted on me, bro. Dead ass. <laughs> you gonna get uh, the Hormesis logo? You're gonna do it? You're gonna be one of those I guys? Know, I don't know about that one, but <laughs> um, dude, I think that that whole mindset, it's like, dude, I'm a Toys R Us kid, bro. I'm never growing up. You know? <laughs> I just uh, wanna be a Toys R Us kid. Yep, exactly, right? I the fact that never wanting to it's like, dude, I'm a lost boy in Neverland, right? Every time I play paintball, mm-hmm. right? I'm just in the paintball field is my fucking nether- netherland. So fucking netherland. Bro. For me, I feel like it's it's the mask, man. Like there's something to it. Like I don't know. I, I felt that way since I was a kid. When I throw on a paintball mask, it's just I'm a different person. Like I, I fucking I don't know how to say it. It's just like you can be whatever the fuck you want to be because no one can see your face. And so like I don't know. I've oh, always okay. taken that like hatch like. You're probably you're not that big of a piece of shit off the field, but I would never want to play paintball <laughs> against you. And I think some of that okay. comes from a. It's a good place to let out that you know that stuff. But B is like you got that mask on, bro. You're you're not hatched in that moment. You're you're you know playing paintball. And and then when you get off the field, you'll shake my hand. You know you'll be a nice guy. But uh, yeah, yeah. I, I think you know some of that theory, and I think maybe football players and those guys kind of feel that too. Is like when you put that helmet on, when you put that mask on, yeah. you know, you're it's not you anymore you know it's it's a different that's person a in there thing. and so a legitimate yeah thing. well the a thing is that, that it's funny kind that of, you pick yeah. that up dude is because i get my mask enchanted so <laughs> you can't oh okay it does yeah make sense. it does make sense yeah who enchants yours is it uh, i just sent it off to a place it's to a place probably never, heard, probably never heard of it okay okay i got you i got you <laughs> <laughs> But now I'm started getting that shit enchanted dead ass. <laughs> <laughs> so. I, I I feel like there's a Bali priest who can help you out with this a little bit. With dude, I gotta look up where my nearest Bali church is, bro. 
Bali, I think that's a country. I don't think it's a religion, but shout out. I'm talking Buddhist temple, you know what I'm saying? Buddhist, yeah, there you go. That's what you got to get. I got I to figure out how to get how to get some kind of creature reincarnate. I got to get a lion reincarnated as my mask. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Jesus. So I just love Brandon's face of like, what the fuck is he he's talking like, about? Like, Damn, that makes sense. <laughs> I mean, dude. Honestly, bro, uh, having maybe a couple drops of like moose blood in there, dude, that should be fire, dude, in the strap, you know, soak it up. You're you're uh, insane, moose? man. But Spiritual you know what? Level, a couple bro. drops of that would help you out and would be fire. Our sponsor, Liquid IV. Um, so I I, I got to do this now because we're about a half hour or an hour into the show and I, I haven't yet. But uh, yeah, Liquid IV, we love them. We appreciate them. They do help us out with a little bit of sponsorship. So for that, we always make sure that we mention them. Um, if you haven't heard of Liquid IV yet, it is a sports hydro or not sports exactly, but just hydration drink in general. So it's got three times the electrolytes in most sports drinks. It's got vitamins B3, B5, B6, B12, and vitamin C in it. Um, you know, it's very similar to any of those products that are going to help get you rehydrated, Pedialyte, uh, Transfuse, stuff like that. My favorite flavors uh, from Liquid IV that they sell, I love their lemon lime. That's why I have this box every time. It's my go-to with a bullet. Um, they did just release a new strawberry lemonade flavor, which I'm guessing that's going to combine mine and Hatch's love. So we'll, we'll see how that goes. Um, but yeah, guys, if you're interested in, in checking out Liquid IV, seeing the hydration help that I can give you, uh, head over to their website, liquidiv.com, and then make sure you use code mafia underscore Moffitt at checkout. Um, so, you know, uh, fucking lost for words here. But yeah, mafia underscore Moffitt, that's going to get you 20% off and uh, free shipping. So it's a little bit of a discount there you know, helps you try it out. Uh, I know they sell it at Costco, other retailers like that. You can get it there. That would be great. The problem is you don't get the 20% off, so you're still paying full price. Um, Plus, if, you get a little bit of love in the bag. Exactly. Personally from us. Yeah, no, it's we send it to you. <laughs> That's fucking... Yeah. I couldn't go with that send, one. <laughs> I'm sorry. I send, my, I'm, I send my love to Liquid, AV, Liquid IV <laughs> HQ, and then they, then they sprinkle it in every bag. <laughs> fucking... Okay. Um... But yeah, so they have a bunch of great flavors. It's a pretty well, uh, like competitively priced product. There's other stuff on the market that's a little more expensive, but I, I just find that this works really well. Um, I enjoy it. I was using it all last week and it helped me out at the, uh, the, the event. So uh, one more time, make sure you check out liquidiv.com uh, with that code mafia underscore Moffitt, M-A-F-I-A underscore M-O-F-F-I-T-T. And yeah, you'll get 20% off and free shipping. It'll come right to your door. So awesome. Thank you, Liquid IV. And uh Okay, we'll get back to the show now. I brought, I uh, it was f like fifty over fifty dollars worth of uh, IV, uh, liquid IV. I spent uh, right before the event that I brought, uh, brought to the event. It's that bag. I threw in lemon lime and, and golden cherry uh, oh, in yeah, that like that, we, one, that one I brought to bag. the event. Yeah, Can't yeah. Be hydrated all weekend. Oh yeah, and then we bought some more once we got there. Oh dude, we, I, it, dude. we had so we much it. liquid IV. <laughs> Fuck yeah, man. Oh. Um, a funny story. Just me off my feet. I was actually, you know, uh, I ended up staying with Transfuse owner uh, all week, so that was that was some fun times there. We uh, we we threw some shots back and forth about the different products, but uh, I I will say Steven's a really genuinely good guy, and uh, I think you know they they have a good product too. It's it's similar, but you know it just kind of it's up to you. It's like what you, you know which one do you wanna do you wanna go with? And for us, that's that's gonna be Liquid IV. Mm -hmm. Liquid IV is my shit, bro. Tastes great. I, the taste, I really do love the taste. And I hate to say this, Stephen, but it's the mixing. You know, if Liquid IV, you throw it in a thing, it blends right up. Like, you don't get any of those, like, chunks, none of the, like, kind of pasty, like, I don't know, that, like, grittiness. Uh, I, I definitely got it with Transfuse a couple of times. And, you know, it's one of those things, like, nah, it's, now it's going to make take longer to blend it in. <laughs> I don't know. Little things like that uh, make a superior product, in my opinion. Shout out to Little Liquid details. IV, man. It launches me off my feet, dude, like a tank in the grass. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> launches you off your feet. Um, but yeah, man, I mean, getting back into it, uh, I think that was most of the stuff. Oh, you know what we haven't talked about yet? And I'm kind of surprised we haven't. Um, but Ronnie Dizon uh, committed a murder on the pro field, <laughs> which it's also funny, too, because Dizon only shoots him like three or four, maybe five times. It's the slow motion that makes it look Well, bad. it's the slow motion, but it's also the fact that Fetty is in the corner lighting this motherfucker up. It, um, Fetty was the one who did most of the damage, but he's not seen in any of the clips, so he's not connected I, there to There is it. a clip. I have seen a clip. Okay, of that there is one. Problem. 
well, from literally over Fedorov's shoulder. He's like, <laughs> just like, like shooting, shooting, shooting. He goes, what the fuck? And he started shooting at the guy on the ground. Yeah. Right? It reminds Dude, me of a... Uh... Oh, my God. It reminded me a little bit when BC uh, went down on Dylan and like same thing. Jordan was in the corner just lighting up Brandon Cornell. <laughs> it was like, oh, you got in the wrong fight right now, brother. <laughs> yeah, dude. Whenever I see a, if I see a guy dump my teammate, uh, of course he's getting you a little get extra fucked. love. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Uh, if my teammate is not giving them extra love, that guy's not my teammate anymore. Dead ass, right? And uh, well, unless it would be a spin penalty. True. <laughs> I, if you're getting a major to give extra love that's that's kind of the line for me like don't don't get us pulled off the field because you wanted to Ron, let someone have it for that Ron, you got a major for that that is whack bro really yeah i i think the major was for playing on more so because he he did play on he got hit first and then turned and shot omara would that have changed anything exactly no, it wouldn't have changed anything but that's technically what the penalty was for if that makes sense let the gladiators fight, bro. Let the gladiators <laughs> okay, fucking Maddie. fight. Come on. Is that no, what you said? Did you say that too? I don't know, but I, I think he said that about other things because it's like, yeah, I, I think you're also, you're looking at it like that the penalty was for overshooting. No, there is no overshooting penalty. Thank no God. one had any problems with what Dizon did. I mean, obviously some people Dude, who the like... comments, bro. Oh my God. I will say they're kind of right. I know you love violence in our sport, but showing people a dude putting four into a dude's face from like a cup, an inch away, it's probably not the best PR. Like I get it. It I'll hypes all that. of us up. I'll give you that. Um, absolutely right. And like, I'm not, I'm also not going to tell HK to take the post down. Like, yeah, fuck it. If they want to post that, hell yeah. But I don't think it's the best look, in my opinion. Um, Probably not the best look. I will also like, say, it's though. It's going to happen. Yeah, well, and, you know. He would do it to Ronnie. He would do it I, to Ronnie. Literally, that was Omara's comment on the post, and that's what I was trying to say. Omara literally said, I would have done the same exact thing. And because, like, that that's the type of dude Omara is. He gives it, and he also takes it. So he, prob he probably gained a little more respect for, for Ronnie there when he, when he turned that on him. Um, but, no, I mean... I think that is the thing you have to think about. We live in a very politically correct culture where any sort of violence is seen as a bad thing. And I know you fucking hate that because I hate it too, but that's what it is. And it's sad, but most of the kids growing up today will see that and never want to play our sport, which is fucked. You're probably right. You're probably right about that. Oh, and sure. there's probably kids who saw that and they're like, fuck yeah, I want to do yeah! this. I guarantee you there's me. those kids too. But I think I in today's like, age, the, we the majority is God the other side. That's unfortunate. Yeah, I wanted to play I... so bad after I saw that. <laughs> but you were already knocked out of the tournament. What? No, dude, let me tell you, dude. I, hey. <laughs> it was bad, bro. Dude, there was even some times where uh, I would bunker a guy, right? There was one time. Okay, dude, during the Greenville growl game, I like run down. I like, I like do like a fucking switch move, bunker a guy, then bunker another guy, right? The first guy, he's like looking the other way, and he's like, sticking his head out and all i can see is just his head so I'm, of course i'm like bop, 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 right just see him right in the right in the head run the next guy down next guy a little taller a little maybe like six months so i said let me put that up a little bit right and then so uh the ref was like oh no not, none of that malicious intent shit and i'm like bro i gave him three that's literally like, a single trigger pull that's one literally ramp. dude that's one ramp. literally it's like dude if there if it's like, who are some of these refs? Like the ref, like refs discretion. I, I felt like some of it was so like disgustingly like lame, but I did see a guy get punched on the goddamn field. Yeah. That one. I was like, I, we were in the pitch for that. And I was like, so do you guys know Ugh. the backstory on that? I'm pretty sure they're homies. So the backstory helps a little bit. The guy who got punched is Hank. He used to play on uh, the Ironman last year. Uh, he's a jeweler. I know some people kind of have known him from that uh, in the paintball community. He's literally getting picked up by the team who hit him. He was just playing with this team for the first event. And so literally he's coming to play with those boys the next event. So that's why, of course, he hit him. And of course, it was a little bit of a pissed off anger thing. But it ended at like, hey, dude, I'm sorry. I shouldn't have hit you. My bad. We good? And like. That, that it's was not it. like they were strangers. It's yeah, not like they were strangers. Yeah, they're, but they're, dude, fucking, of course, Paintball TMZ, everyone knows who I'm fucking talking about, instantly got on the story and was like, oh, there's a huge fight and a scandal going on and the NXL is, is putting it down and they don't want people to know. No, two dudes who know each other got a little, you know, a little tiffy. So what? <laughs> like, I they, they say, shook hands the and punch, ended it. The punch probably should not have been thrown, really, right? 
Pain, yeah, right? and 100%, so he, he was contact. suspended for that match, as, you know, is in the rules. You can't put hands on another player. But I just, I hated the vibe of, like, oh, this huge fight happened and all this I, shit. It and it's up, like... It was blown up so much. Especially because, like, I'll, they knew everybody, at least, okay. If you're relatively in the game of paintball, obviously, you you know some people. And you're like, okay, these people are associated with these people who are associated with these people. Right? Mm. They play at the same park. They know the same exactly. people. Exactly. Yeah. You, you, the connections you make, right? So it's like... I think punch probably shouldn't have been thrown, but, uh, you know, I like the grittiness, right? Oh, 100%. I mean, I'm not saying that was something that, that should have happened, but I just, the reaction to it is what annoyed me because it's like, why why the fuck are we saying this is a big deal when it, it really wasn't? Like, it wasn't like, was, like the fight that happened at Cup. It's like that, the Bonnie clip. Makes it look so bad. Yeah. Well, the point I was going to make, it wasn't like the fight that happened at World Cup 2021. That was an actual oh, where fight. where the guys got fucking jumped? Yes, where multiple people fucked people up and, like, that's... No, that is not that is not good in any way, shape, or form. But what happened yeah. here was a dude got a little pissed off and hit some dude in the ribs, and then said, "I'm sorry." Hit and his friend chicken. in the ribs. Yeah, that's that's a better thing too. And honestly, hit his friend in the ribs. Hatch, that'd be like you punching AK. Like maybe he just pissed you the fuck off one time, but I guarantee you, three hours later, you could go up, shake his hand, be like, "Hey, dude, I'm sorry. That was my bad. I shouldn't have done that. Are, are we cool?" And it'd probably be cool. And the thing is, right? It, with, at least with some of my team. We don't even have to say that shit, right? Sometimes we are just like, all right, next point. Got fucked up. Got right? fucked especially up, when yep. Especially well, especially when, when, when you like, guys are playing uh, against each other and actively letting it into each other. Yeah. I'm not, dude, I remember there was, this one, there was one time, Brando remembers this shit, lives in his head rent-free for sure. Uh, <laughs> I made an inside move. I made an inside move on his ass, uh. gave him one ball right to the fucking <clears throat> face. And uh, I remember there was this one time where Brando gave me mercy. I remember this one. This one lives in my head rent-free. I'm like, I remember you being fighting. pissed off about this. I am like fucking fighting for my life. I am like fucking fighting for my life. Like Kentucky lefty heads up, Kentucky lefty heads up going fucking crazy. Right. And then, uh, then all of a sudden like, they call, they call game. Right. And I, I hear Brando, I hear some footsteps. And I see Brando running up on me. I said, if you ever fucking blow that horn early again, I'm a fucking shoot your ass, dude. Come on, bro. Yeah, it's the way of the fucking world. Yeah. You're uh, it is what it is. You're very Omar ish in that standpoint. Like, right, because the thing is, and I, I would have done it to him. I was going to say, and I think that's that's at least the level I need from people. If you're going to shoot someone a couple more times, you better not fucking complain if they do it back. And if you, they do it back and you complain, you're you're a bitch in my head. Because it's like, bro, you started that game, you wanted to put six on him, and now that he has the drop on you, can't can't get pissed off, you know? I look at it as a... It's a little bit of karma. <laughs> I see you, and I raise you a little more. <laughs> and I raise you right? a little more, yeah. That's what I see it as. So I think that, uh, you know, and dude, there, were, <laughs> there was one time where we were doing some drills and, uh, Brando, <laughs> I was like next in line. Brando's in front of me. Right. It's like, they're like, go. And then Brando sticks his head out. Bam. Clapped. Dude. I was fucking laughing and he's like, bro, fuck you, dude. It, and it's just like that friendly banter. Right. Cause it's like, even though it's frustrating getting shit on. Right. It's like, okay, at least he made it funny. Right? At least we can laugh it off. Does does friendly banter, uh, does that also go to when Logan and Brandon had a gentleman's agreement during like midpoint? I was lame. <laughs> Absolutely. Was lame. Absolutely. <laughs> hey, am I hit? Good am I hit here? Do you see that? <laughs> I'll never uh, forget it, people. If you haven't heard on like the story on the podcast, fucking during one of the I'm practices, out. Logan did like. I don't know who shot who. Someone got shot, and they like were checking. They were like showing the person across the field. Like, am I hit? Like, do you see anything here? As Hatch is trying to shoot me, he's like right, right behind, behind Logan am, trying am, to shoot me. I am like three feet behind Logan, and the Dorito behind him. Like I'm like, give me a fucking inch, you little bitch. Give me an, <laughs> give me an inch, right? And uh, so I'm like, Logan, keep shooting his ass, bro. Keep shooting him, right? So, oh, gentlemen's agreement, bro. Come is. on, it hey, hey, is, Hatch. Bro. That's that's like if someone pulls their knife out last round of the game and you don't pull yours out, you're a bitch. You got to oh, take that knife depends. fight. It depends. Is it overtime or is it like? Uh, Doesn't matter. Ra ra a random round. Oh, dead ass. Knife fight, fight mid. You gotta respect that shit. And if you don't, you're a bitch. <laughs> One person fucks it up, dude. The entire team's getting massacred. Yeah, but I don't care. Right. That's that's not honorable. No, it is not honorable. Right. So never be the guy to mess it up. Exactly. That's the thing. Never be the guy to mess it up. Yeah. So, but luckily, right? We have a we have a great team, and uh, even when our darkest moments of going fucking one and three being pissed the fuck off, right? Dude, we can come together as we can come together as a unison. As a and unison, launch our tanks into the sky. <laughs> I 
I don't, I don't know if you used the right word there, but still, we're going to go to the launching takes in this guy's story because this was fucking hilarious. I don't know if you guys saw Hatch's uh, stories about this on his Instagram. Dude, so there were three videos, oh. right? The first one, and they get gradually way worse. Yeah. They do, right? actually, oh, yeah. Do. My God, <laughs> the bro. third one was definitely the best. <laughs> dude, oh, I did not expect that one, dude. Uh, so it's like the first – like, so we are using – Shout out to Carl Markowski, baby. Shout out to Carl Markowski. Hard to fucking his, kill. Uh, hard to kill with his little, t- his, his little uh, tank degasser, right? Tank, tank tool? His tank tool. Bro, that shit's awesome. Hey, let me just say first off, I'm Stephen Hatch and welcome to Jackass. Don't try that shit at home. <laughs> right? I, dude, don't be that fucking guy that tries it at home. Dude, you are going to fuck your shit yeah. up. You, you are obviously, in that story, we're professionals. Right? Professionals in a closed circuit. There's no one else around. No one else around. Just professionals. The uh, word professional is kind of loose here, but please do not try this at home. It's a very stretchy professional, (laughs) right? But the thing is, so the first one, we are like, and it's like, we we let it go. And it's like gliding across the grass a little bit. Like, obviously, like it hit the ground and kind of shot up a little bit and bounced around, right? We're like, oh, and I was like, whoa, dude, that was (laughs) sick, dude. Fuck, right? And then we do the next one. The next or one. Hold on, wait, wait, hold on, hold on. Like, hold on. That first one, when, so like I had a, I, I, when I put the tank tool on, I, I, I put it on like just, all I had to do was like tighten it just a little bit, then it, it hit air. So I was, I had it at that point. Well, it's like. And what I wanted. Hmm? Oh, I was just going to say, it's like when you do the water bottle, when you like squeeze it very tight yeah. and you just got to get a little gap and then it's going to go. Yep. It goes. Yeah. It, but all, all I want to do was like. Twist it on real quick and let it go on the ground and, and go. And I thought, and it was a full tank, so oh, I thought God. like, yeah, I thought like if I'm not like really holding it, it's gonna go flying out of my hands. So I got to do this quick and Cedar's catching. So as soon as I twisted it, I dropped it, and it, it didn't do exactly what what we wanted, but it still went. It, it, it still shot. It, I like how you said Cedar is catching this. I think that's a loose term. I think Cedar would have been hit by it and then caught it. I don't know if it would have been a catch per se. Cedar, oh, you know what? You're retrieving. Yes, that's yeah, a better way to put it. He was right. being the true retriever. So then the second one comes and fucking actually shot around a little bit. Went, Amy went to AJ, right? Actually shot around a little bit, right? Went to Brando's feet. Yeah. Brando was tap dancing on it, right? Doing his thing. <laughs> and then... The third one, bro. Yo, dude, the third one. <laughs> dude, okay, let me just tell you, uh, we have gotten this shit down to a chemistry to where the next time we do it. A chemistry? You mean a science, dude, right? <laughs> a chemistry. We got chemicals involved. <laughs> um, so we know exactly how to do it. Hatch's so, misuse of English this episode has been my favorite thing. We're good. We're good. <laughs> right? So Brando gets it right to where it needs to go. And he's like this. He's like, and I was like, all right, Brando, all you got to do is hit it and then low-key shock put it, right? Hit it just and quit happens, it, bro. Right? Just pump right? it and dump and it. So, just fuck and it so and chuck it. He's like, uh, use it and lose it. <laughs> uh, so he is like hitting it, fucking no joke, shoots back at him, right? And fucking comes out of his hands. So he, Hold on, he hold like, on. Hold on. I, hold on. Let me demonstrate this. Oh, well, I mean, if your camera works, we'd be able to see it. Never mind. God, <laughs> Okay, you're so, you're in about eight pixels right now, brother. Continue hatch. Continue. Okay, we're sorry, good. buddy. So, so he is like cranking it. That shit. He's like he's like he's like whoa! Fucking shoots back at him. He's like oh shit! Grabs it, barely tosses it, and dude, that shit went. Woo, it went dude. flying, I, dude. And I go, I did not expect that. I go, dude, I pause, I like we watched the video. And I'm like playing it in slow motion, dude. That shit's on screen for like five frames. It, <laughs> it, it flew. I'm like, I'm like, oh my god, dude! It actually went so high up. We were like, the angle that it was going at, we're like, oh my god, right at the fucking concrete, bro. Are you kidding? Yeah, me? crack and your tank, was, like. And then, uh, thank God, it didn't hit the concrete. Right? You, you but, still oh, may man. not want to use that tank again, <laughs> or at least get it hydro tested. Like, I don't the know. Is, right. The only damage was the ground. That's true. I yeah. I just tend to the think tank just hits right on the right on the perfect with, with the high tanks. pressure, pretty much frag devices that we carry as our, you know, propellant support, you know, devices for paintball. Uh, I think we shouldn't fuck with them. Like oh, it, it'd be like fucking right. with a scuba tank. <laughs> like you're absolutely right. But the thing is, we had to. 
We had to for science. Had to. For science. I understand. For My science. bad. For chemistry. I, I for chemistry. For chemistry. Yes. Yeah, that's like, true. I go, I go, dude, what would happen if we tried to launch it? I'm, we're just sitting there in the garage. Right? What would happen if we tried to launch it? Was this a Timmy and idea? Did, was Tim there for this idea? Dude, Tim was all fucking over us, dude. God damn it, Tim. He, was, he always he was brings hound, horrible dude. ideas. I swear he to was God. Hounding me. He was hounding me in my head. Right? Well, this and, was a uh, genius idea. I agree. It was a completely genius <laughs> idea. Right? So, uh. It's genius until someone loses an eye or an arm or gets hit in the head or some shit like that. That's that's what the catchers are for. That's what the exactly. catch. Oh, okay. I forgot. You guys had this down to a yeah. science. Yeah. A chemistry. This was <laughs> Mythbusters, pretty much. Dude, legitimately, it was. I said that, Brando. I, I said, said that. that. I go, I go, dude, this is some Mythbusters shit. <laughs> I was like, dude, let's test it. Let's, let's see what happened. Is it gonna? It, so, what would you say as a MythBuster? Is it uh, uh, what what were their things? Was it uh, busted, plausible, or confirmed? Luckily, confirmed. Uh, we're still. I think we're still conducting tests because we are. So it's in the plausible. Oh, it's in the it's a, it's for sure doable, but we're trying to do it efficiently. Mm. Yeah. I show up to the next saying. event. You guys got like cardboard fins that you throw on your tanks and shit, like trying Holy to get height shit. records. Dude, I didn't even think about it like that. We could actually use like a paint box, fucking tear that bitch up. Yeah, to make, dude. Like, a stand. Get some better like uh, accelerate or not acceleration, oh, dude, aerodynamics so the, on it. The play that we're thinking is Brando will be like this, holding the tank. I will be right behind him and I will be the cranker. And, right? <laughs> the cr and I'm going to go, I'm going to go, shink, fucking rip that bitch. And he's going to go, whoa, 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 and go fucking crazy, <laughs> right? And then uh, whoa, Cedar whoa, whoa, and whoa. Micah, Cedar and Micah are going to be uh, downrange. Receiving. <laughs> they're gonna be receiving and uh we're all gonna be good okay in the name of content bro so in the name of content god damn it if i lose my friends i'm gonna be really sad that this is how they <laughs> went out you know like i think that's why i just don't want you guys to do this god also, damn dude, you also have to remember dude, we are also testing the tank tool to its maximum yeah. potential you yeah, know, I don't know if I, Carl I went I, through this. I was going to say. Much dandy. Like, <laughs> I'm pretty sure when he put out this item, he was not thinking people were going to do this with it. Well, no, well, we're testing it. We're doing the DMG. We're testing test, so. it. Yeah. Dedication makes great flights. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> right? So we are, we are testing. We're in the testing stages now. And uh, shout out to Carl, dude, for some fucking absolute amazing Dude, that, that shit's really so question uh, question oh, two you guys know that tool is supposed to be meant to a leak the tank first and then remove the reg yeah that's how we were leaking it yeah at the same time <laughs> yeah bone dry yeah that, that, that god damn the there's a lot off. of See? legal See? shit that you guys are no, just dude, going in, over uh, and no dude okay no, no no in the florida heat that that's probably the best way to get rid of the frost you know what i'm saying mm-hmm it gets closer. Yeah, to the we're blowing stick. the mosquitoes away. I'm straight oh up, God. dude. Mosquito repellent. I don't love this idea. I'm just gonna be the first one. No, it's, it's not hilarious. An idea. It's not an idea, but it's but... not a great idea. Oh, luckily, we're professionals. So we're pro uh, professional mullet, stretchy wears. professionals. Exactly. Well, that actually, wait, no, I just realized this. Both of you guys have a mullet. That is like all you need to be safe forever. Like jackass, has a wig. they got through most of their shit because. I don't know. Maybe there's one dude with a mullet on on set. You know, like you're never you're never gonna get hurt if there's a mulleted man around. That's very very accurate. I, I feel like it's never true. hurt when Brando's around. Yeah. See. Hmm. Well, paintballs do hurt. Me with it. I'm gonna be honest. Paintballs do hurt, but uh. Paintballs hurt when I'm not fucking playing paintball. That's for sure. Yeah. No. And uh, fuck. I don't know. I. I don't like getting shot on the sidelines, but I like getting good footage, and so thus those two things can't. You know, unless your adrenaline's happen. going from playing paintball, do paintballs hurt? Not, yeah. but in a way to where, like, like the way Matt the gym rat tested it, that was a good way because he can legitimately test his pain scale, right? Because it's like he's not playing paintball, his adrenaline's not going. He's just like, all right, I'm gonna get fucking shot. Yeah, and he still said he's tournament dead. paint was a six out of ten, and I agree because it it's not fun. Like, if it, it feels better, don't get me wrong, like a nice tournament mm -hmm. blend that just kind of softly breaks does feel better there's a little with sting adrenaline there. it's like a one with adrenaline it's like a one or a two yeah i mean with you know when you're just i you also have to think hatch every 
perspective I have about getting hit with paint, I'm sitting on the sidelines, I don't see it coming, and I have no adrenaline going. So my pain scale for paintballs are probably going to be higher than yours because a lot of your experiences with it are running down a field at someone kind of almost ready for that moment to kind of happen. And you probably aren't even thinking about that or feeling that because you're like, I just want to stab this fucking kid. Um, mm. So, yeah, I just – paintballs hurt, motherfuckers. All right, don't say they don't. No, they do. They definitely do, <laughs> without a doubt. And yeah, the one time, you know, when I was playing at Mech X Ball and like when I've played before, yeah, they don't hurt, but. Hey, Ryan, you got shot in the fucking back and got a major. You got, didn't feel that shit. I didn't. No, 100%. <laughs> didn't feel that shit. I was also the last one alive in OT. In OT so if there's a time you're going to get a major, it's probably the time to try. I agree. I but feel dude. like at that point, it's like, we got nothing left, bro. <laughs> like, yeah. I got to win this shit or we're, we're, we're done. Yep. It's either, it's either lose or, or lose. lose. You get a dirty hang. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Right. So pick your poison. I'd rather have the dirty hand because that means I shot all those fuckers. <laughs> yep, exactly. That's way more prideful. They're, at that point, they'll be like, yeah, gift. Yeah. Right? It's given to them. Right. Uh, but man, mm. what a great weekend in Florida. What a great what a great way to uh, start off the year. Not the one and three part because that shit sucked. Mm. No, that's, no, that's not fun. Hey, but bro, everything else was I, great. Learning. I had the same record as AC Diesel, bro. The highest paying team in the <laughs> NXL, bro. What are you talking about? Same, same. That, same that's same. a good point. Yeah. Same, no, same, you guys bro. are a hundred percent. There's no diff there. <laughs> right. So uh it is what it is. It happens to the best of us. Right? It happens to the best of us. Yeah, man. Really, uh Diesel is proof of it. And Dynasty is also proof of not giving a fuck and just being old and shitting on everybody. <laughs> not being a fuck. No, I don't right. know if they love that description of it, but yeah, that's that's pretty much what they're doing. They will hate that description of it, but dude. Well, and also bringing in a couple magic, young bro. stabbers to go do the hard jobs. Like exactly. I, there, I there's there's a I reason forgot. there's a reason they send Arturo as the one because that's what Arturo should be doing, and Ryan should not be doing that because Ryan's bones would break and crack crack in half probably. Yeah, I remember they were saying how it's like they're like you know, uh, I'm I'm gonna stop playing when I just have to sit back and relax, and all the other guys are gonna win for me. Right? Well, that's that's kind of what happens already. I mean, it is a team effort. Don't get me wrong. Like, Marcelo had that great play. Yosh had some good shots. Dude, Blake, holy fuck. In the finals, the reason why that motherfucker was finals MVP, I can literally, I saw it happen. So my my you know assignment on the finals was to shoot the Edwards brothers. So I was shooting all the damage breakouts. Every single time I was, like, shooting a damage breakout, the dude coming to the Dorito side would die. Like, I shit you not. Like, it was either the one or the two on that side were getting clipped off the break. And I was like, he, they don't get to play paintball. Like, right. this it's is hard really hard. Yeah. It's hard to lose when you're killing so many people off the break. I mean, then you lose a five on two, but that that's okay. You know, they, they, they brought it back. Hey, bro, relatable, dude. Did you guys hear that that happened in the finals? Uh, I was watching oh, the finals. The, yeah, Dynasty lost a five on two. Yeah, yeah. No with the Edwards back. yeah they brought it back which is kind of a dope story because I was filming the Edwards for that and that's uh that's you know storyline we're trying to create so I'll take it you can't beat brothers there's something about brothers man very true luckily I got like my whole telepathy. team luckily I got a whole team of them you know what I'm saying you know what I'm saying yeah I know I know but I'm gonna be honest like when you think of the brothers in our sport the Jackson brothers Boyan brothers Edwards brothers they're all fucking good. Like, I, I wouldn't want to fuck with them. <laughs> like, I don't know. There's just something about having that connection to another member of your team that you're playing with where it's just super silent. Like, you don't have to talk to them because you spent 30 plus years at this point or however old you guys are, you know, kind of learning his mannerisms and such. I, I did catch a cool shot of the Edwards brothers, uh, both simultaneously reloading. Like, they pulled out a pod, opened it, and reloaded, like, all at the mm. same time. I, nice. It's pretty, it's pretty sick. A fire clip. There's a glitch in fire. the Matrix there. In oh, sync. Yeah. I mean, look at me and Logan, dude. Father-son duo. Yeah, you guys aren't brothers, but yeah, father-son is definitely a, a better way go. to put that. I, I, I protect my child, you know what I'm you saying? Protect my child. He really well, he is protected your child, you on man. that roller coaster. He I mean, did protect yeah. me on that roller coaster. Hey, and I some, needed him, dude. Sometimes children have to protect their parents, you know? So it, it dude, comes full straight. circle. He, he said... He said, I'm getting too old for this, so or he told me I'm getting too old, so I need to get on the roller coaster. Get some uh get some youth in me. So it's all I mean, good. Hatch, it's let's good. be real. You look like you were born in nineteen seventy with that haircut and mustache. It looks like I was born in the seventies and just didn't age. Pretty much. Like you're the Shane Howe of the seventies, pretty much. Doing trying Ooh. my best, brother, trying my best. Shout out Shane. I am upset I didn't get to see him at the event, just stuff. You I know. didn't get to see him. 
No. You didn't, or you did? Yeah, we stopped. I did. Talk. I did. Oh, you guys did. Yeah, that's lucky. I. And it's just it is what it is. You know, goddamn these events, man. Like. <laughs> Hatch it sucks get, when you hatch. go to the event to see these people, right? Because it's like you really do get to see these people, and then oh, do you literally have no time to see some of them? Yeah, like, uh, me and Ryan, but I'm pretty sure what Ryan you were gonna segue into. Dude, we saw each other for a total of four minutes. I was gonna segue to events. something completely different, and that's fine. Oh, my bad. Um, but no, like that is right. We you know we've only saw we only saw each other a couple minutes just because we were different, doing different shit. But in the Discord that we're in, and what I was gonna say is Hatch will probably understand this reference. There was a guy who was like asking where all of us were. And I was like, man, when I go to events, I'm, it's a black hole. Like I just, that's the only thing on my mind is that event and how I'm going to get my two to four hours of sleep and then get up and do the whole thing again. Yeah. I get like, I, I will go through one tenth of my notifications at an event. Right. I'm oh, just like, yeah. eh, that's why I'm done. Fucking, I mean, dude, my brother literally had a baby shower this past weekend. I didn't think about that for a second. <laughs> Like I was just like, oh, I gotta, gotta film shit. I gotta, I gotta do stuff. Mm. Yeah. Shout out my brother, by the way. Um, but <laughs> you know, it's just, I don't know. It's one of those things that like you go to an NXL and the only thing on your mind is that NXL. Mm. It's like for us, it's like for you, Ryan, it's filming. And for us, it's like, dude, focus on the win. Mm -hmm. Right. Scouting so other like, teams, yeah. you know, exactly. trying to go help out with your guys' stuff that you have to do to be able to play the event and stuff like that god damn they are demanding yeah. <laughs> if we're if we were on vacation we'd be on our phones we're yeah not, it's not a vacation yeah, we're not on our vacation we're working it's a good ass point brando it's a good ass point and one thing uh brando shout out to fucking michelle dude the best dude. fucking player on the diamonds by far holy shit and i, I can by, back that up not even close. i walked not even over close. there i walked over to the lone wolf premier field for like a wnxl game because i had to film one of the other teams in that set Michelle fucked some girls up, bro. bro like she was getting in that oh stake. I was like, God damn, she's been watching Brandon. I know, I know where this is coming from. <laughs> she was getting dude. so many kills, dude. And I'm like, I'm cheering like a motherfucker. I'm like, let's go, Michelle. I am going crazy. Oh, it was hilarious because I was in the opposite pits of you guys. So when I could hear you guys like popping off, and in my head I was like, let's fucking go. Uh, yeah. And in my body language, I was like, this sucks. Oh, I'm sorry, You're guys. Like, you're like taking a picture, you're like, just yes, trying to film. Fuck yeah, let's fucking go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude, it it, yeah. So that that was on Saturday. Mm -hmm. On Friday, they didn't do so hot. Um, you know that they had a long meeting adjusted and came out with the right game plan, communicated very well. Like they they, they played team ball uh, on that Saturday, and um, you know Michelle was was on. Um, on the, some the previous point she day. put him in the backpack. Some point she put him in the backpack. Yeah, yeah. And but um I, like that Saturday morning, uh I don't know if she wants me to say, but that Saturday morning when, when she came pitting for us, um, she did not want to play. Like her legs were hurt, like it it was. They were overshooting Michelle because she was doing so good. Yeah, yeah. On Friday. They were, yeah. They, were, they just... were fucking her up just because she was fucking them up. Like they would they would overshoot her. Oh, they were smart. Like, oh, well, they keyed out yeah. on the player that's fucking them up. Make her Straight not want to play paintball anymore. <laughs> that's exactly. and she that's how you win. Like, yeah. And she she's running pods for us, and she said her legs were hurting, just all the bruises, and she's like, I really don't want to play. Oh well, put puts all the gear on, and you know it, it's like that. You put that mask, mask on that bro. different that persona. That mask on, motherfucker. Yeah, I'm mm -hmm. telling I'm that, telling you that's what it is. Because all right, making a reel with mask off, bro. Making a reel with mask, mask off. <laughs> But, um, yeah man well so it's funny uh random you know thing we were talking at dinner blake was actually telling alex that we played together at that event and it was funny because one of the things he said to alex he's like and he's got that good mentality and i was like what do you what do you mean by that and he's like yeah that, that switch was flipped when we were on the field and then i remember like i was yelling at refs a couple times and shit like that and i was like oh yeah that's yeah that comes out <laughs> like you know I, I try to keep that cool but uh if i'm shooting paintballs in anger there, there's something else coming out of me <laughs> Exactly, bro. Yeah, let's get big balls. Um, shoot the gelatinous. That's ones. one of my. Uh, that's one of my favorite Jesus. terms. You too. Uh, doing something in anger, like uh, Martin Brundle uses it for Formula One all the time. But driving cars in anger, like against each other. And I, I know Maddie started to use shooting paintballs at each other in anger. I just, I don't know. It's one of those old school English like sayings that doesn't get used a lot anymore. I would agree. Start doing everything in anger. Yeah, dude. My shit in anger. <laughs> I, shouldn't I don't think day, that'll don't be good lie. for you. I think that'd actually be a negative. If you think about it, dude, if, you, if you're really that mad at your shit, you just want to get away from it. <laughs> what the fuck? Where do I go with that? 
<laughs> I mean, anyways, actually, anyways. I actually, I can go somewhere with that. When we started this show, Hatch said he had a bathroom story, and I told him to wait. Bro. But you know what? I will now let you have your time, Hatch. Dude, bro. So obviously, the flight home was way longer than what than what it was supposed to be. At some point, I'm like, man, I gotta take a shit, right? Dude, the guy next to me, fucking tall, Paul, bro. This guy was huge, right? So I'm like, hey, bro, uh, can I get out? Right? I just want to say, out. it's not actually Paul. <laughs> it's just a it's different tall person that he a named big, Paul. Tall person <laughs> that looks exactly like Paul. So I'm getting out. I'm using the bathroom, bro. I hear someone trying to like get the handle, and I'm like, uh, I go, "Occupado." I say that exactly like that. I go, "Occupado," and obviously I'm saying it loud because there's a fucking plane going on in the background, right? And so, it someone is just like, dude, viciously shaking this shit, right? And I am like, "Occupado, yo, someone's in here," right? And then, bro, they fucking actually ripped the <laughs> fucking door open while I'm taking a shit. Oh, no. Is this plane. fucking Homeland Security? Like, no, dude, it was a kid. Oh, God. And I'm like, I'm like, bro, I'm like, hey, yo, I fucking pants around, around your ankles. Place. Like, uh. no, I, they weren't around my ankles. They were sure, like, no, they were around your sure, ankles. Like, like, oh, Let's be real. Bro. They were around your ankles. Dude, I, dude, bro, it's that funnier that so way. <laughs> yes, it is funnier that way. Okay. So we're, we're going to say, we're going to say they were around my ankles. Okay. Dude. Dude, perfect. Uh, there we go. Dude, this fucking kid rips open the fucking door, breaks the fucking lock on the plane. Jesus. And I'm just like, bro, fucking get out of here, you little fuck. Like trying to like <laughs> hold the door, like all these kids like trying to fucking peep at me shitting, dude. I'm like, get away from me, you little freak. Yeah. So, kids on planes, uh dude, they could be a rough so one. On my flight from Denver to Phoenix, I had a kid like directly behind me. He was he was okay for a bit, and about thirty minutes after we took off, he started fucking with my seat. Like started kept hitting it, kicking it, doing all that like shit. And I was just like, bro. I'm too tired for this. And so I looked back at the mom and I did the like, the are look. you going to get your kid in check right now? Cause I'm about to get pissed. And she was like, okay, I'm sorry. And so she kind of stopped him from doing that. Apparently that's all this fucker wanted to do. Cause he spent the next hour crying. Cause he couldn't do that. So kids, here. man, <laughs> you know, I definitely bro. not ready for them yet. <laughs> I'm, no I've got some way, more time. <laughs> but luckily, you know, but I'm going to be an uncle. So you know what? I'll get some, some life hey. lessons there. That's, Shout out to that's all close the enough in the world, you know, at close least enough for me. Let's be real. Mm -hmm. The thing is, the uncles are cool, right? Yeah. The, oh, yeah. Well, actually, Ryan, they're either cool or they're creepy, bro. You got to pick one. I'm cool. Nah, I'm let's not. go. There we go. There we <laughs> go. They're not like an uncle with benefits. I'm not, I'm not going to be the, hey, <laughs> hey you want to come down to the basement, little boy? No, that, that, that's not me. I, I don't <laughs> think that's a good with look. Benefits, bro. <laughs> uncle, uncle with, with benefits, bro. Uncle with benefits. I'm dead, bro. Dude, my uncle God damn. Dead. I feel like you have to live in the South for that. That's a very much, that's a, that's a Southern american nah thing. bro dude a little story about my uncle right um mm. when i was a kid he had he had a single cab black truck piece of shit right and the only fuck dude this is the only rules in the truck or if you see a chick with big tits you got to point him out <laughs> dude and you would like fucking associate that shit with like a fruit like and dude when we see a chick with big tits like dude she got the melons right you mean, fuck, like that was like the thing right when i was like a, when i was like a kid with my yeah. uncle so that was like a defining moment for me yeah. when I was a kid. Now you Thinking, just yell channel locks everywhere. No, that, that is definitely <laughs> not what the fuck I yell. I swear to God. I don't know what that word means, so I don't know. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but yeah, man. Um, dude, the event was awesome. Uh, I think we all had a great time. Even even these guys going one and three, they uh, they found some good stories out of it, and I think they did learn a lot from those losses. So. It'll be exciting Dude. to see how they uh, they do I'm the rest of the year. Though. I'm very excited. I think uh, don't sleep on us because we're coming for sure. Mm -hmm. Don't sleep. Yeah. Don't, don't ever coming. sleep on Hatch. I don't think that's a good idea for anyone. I'm yeah, just talking sure. about your life. Like if if Hatch doesn't like you, sleep with one eye open because he's coming for you every day, mm. every night. He's like that. You know, ever heard that the the snail? It's like, would you take ten million dollars? But there's a snail trying to kill you for the rest of your life. Hatch is the snail. I gotta look up how fast a snail can travel internationally. Have you have you not have you not heard this? Would you rather? I have heard. I yeah. I okay. Have. I'm just curious on how you, fast you take snail the goes. money. You take the money. The snail's gonna take years to get across the ocean, and by that time, you could just fly to a different continent and make him have to go even longer. How fast does a snail go? But the fact he's actually right. googling this is what's kind of surprising me. Oh, Ooh. while he does that, uh, I'm gonna bring it back to the Michelle plan real quick, just oh, for sure. because yeah, yeah. I I had like a. A very proud fiance moment. Fuck yeah. Uh, 
to that That's first my girl. That, <laughs> dude, that first point on Saturday again when she said she didn't want to play, she gears up, puts the you know, put the mask on, goes out there, and like she bunkers two people. She shoots the person out in the center. I think she shot the first Dorito player, and then she said she stopped and shot the the last Dorito player on the on the broadcast. They were saying it was a four pack. She was saying it was a five pack. I mean, like in the moment as she's doing that, like everyone's everyone's cheering in the in the pit. We're not supposed to be cheering. No, but doing the quiet going cheer. Fucking crazy. Bro. <laughs> That's my I'm favorite going, thing. I, oh my god! I'm jumping, dude. I'm going crazy. Can I? Okay, so if you guys haven't ever been to an NXL event. The rule in the pits is, you know, you you don't make any noise during the game. And that includes yelling, cheering, because that could potentially give away a move. So every pit team, if someone's doing something crazy, you'll just see all these guys like. Yeah, dude, we're being quiet. Just yeah, and then the point around. ends and then you just hear the. Yeah, as go. soon as the buzzer's pushed, like, I, I do it because as soon as the buzzer's pushed, right? Game time stops. Doesn't fucking matter. Yep, at that right? point. Yeah, dude. I was, I, was going, I was going crazy, bro. And then fucking, I was like, I was like, yo, Michelle, let me get that gun. That shit's hot. Hell, that shit's hot right <laughs> now, you know? Let me fuel her up, right? And then fucking Paul, tall Paul, he's like, let me get fucking through. And he's like, punching through all of us, trying to grab her gun, dude. Like, give me that gun. I want that yeah. gun. I want that grab, gun. Steals the gun from Hatch. Yeah. And we were all trying to grab it. We were all trying Everyone to grab it. Everyone wanted to work on that gun. That's hilarious. Dude, yeah, I like I had tears in my eyes. Like I was, I was so happy. That's always it, that's one of the funniest cool. things when you watch like pro pit teams. Your gun is not really your gun. You just use it when you walk on the field. <laughs> like it's always funny to see these guys come in for the game and first thing is just like marker to someone and then like 2 minutes later they're like, "Where's my gun? Who has it? Like did someone fill it?" <laughs> I don't know. But yeah, it's definitely different from like divisional side where you're like, "Okay, I need to get air. I need to fill this up. I need to do this." <laughs> Nah, pro, it's your responsibility. Pit, pit team does that for you when you're when you're pro, right? And I remember so when I I remember going on uh, Did It Hurts podcast not that long ago, and we were literally talking about pit etiquette, mm -hmm. right? And uh, you know, it's like some people will come in the pits and just like watch the game, dude. If you are doing that, get the fuck out. You can watch from the sideline, right? Yeah. Um, but well, man, and it's that's like when. When so you have a you're really operating pit, like we're yeah, we're you're doing. you're literally talking about. I mean, one of the reasons why Dynasty has won so many events is their pit crew. It's probably the thing no one, the people talk about the least. But Victor Gamboa runs that like it's a fucking like NASCAR pit crew, man. Like he he lets that's the how we do for impact. Yeah, say. no, you guys do a great job too. But like he he'll let media guys into the pit so we can get footage and stuff but like if you're not a player a pit member or media you do not get to go into dynasty's pits he does not give a fuck and i've heard him say some words that are even worse but he he does not care who you are unless you are a player or you know you have a reason to be there you're not in those pits and i respect him for that because dude it's probably a lot more easier on the dynasty guys they just come in you know drop their gun get their pods listen to kevin grab their gun again boom they're out on the field like it, it's just it takes so much stress off you now you're like oh okay i just need to know the play and we're good and then i can go play it yeah i think that uh pit etiquette is a huge thing right and dude if you're not if you're if you're honestly not doing that shit dude you are you have a chaotic pit yeah mm -hmm. and uh, right? uh, this this definitely goes for the divisional side because on pro it's a little different um but if you're coming you know like let's say you just lost a game you're trying to clear out of the pit clear the fuck out of the pit man like yeah give up that space your your time is over don't be sitting on the table rolling up and then sparking a blunt in the middle of someone else's game because you lost like I'd lose just my get the mind. fuck out of the pits i'd lose my goddamn <laughs> mind if that happened i hate seeing those teams where it's like guys you or know they're kind of lingering like around yeah or like lighting up in the pits like look i get it everyone's got smoke you got your habits you got your vices look i got mine all right i'm not special but maybe let's uh be a little considerate when we're doing them <laughs> I agree. I think uh, that's that's one thing that we have a bad time with us, right? Sometimes there will be people that show up to our games to, to help, and then they just end up kind of standing there. Yeah. Right? And uh, it's like, oh, man, it makes me feel so bad because, like, right, when I'm in the game, right, when the mask's on, right, I'm intense, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm, sometimes I'm just like, I'm like, all right, if you're not fucking doing anything, get out. Get the right? fuck out. Yeah. But I'm obviously I'm using a tone that is ten times sharper than that. Yeah. Right. So uh, I know exactly what fucking Gambody, you know, that he's the man, bro. When you want a successful team, 
you need to have a successful pit you need to have a calm pit you need to have mm -hmm. operations going where there's like all right two people filming paint two people running pods these are the gun guys out. like yeah right yep and it's yeah. like there's a there needs to be some kind of system because if you're not having that system and it's just chaotic all the time how are you going to stay focused how are you going to stay focused because some people are like where's my gun where's my gun it's like dude no the gun guy fucking has your gun right mm -hmm. that's who has it yeah or like i know i gave it to brandon so like brandon has my gun he didn't give it to someone else mm -hmm. that is his job he knows okay get this filled get the get a hopper full and then get this back to you know me in this in this case but yeah no it's it is a big part of the game i think a lot of people sleep on i so slept on i completely agree ryan and um it's just one of those things where if you don't have it you're gonna fucking lose you're, you're gonna, gonna lose, want it you're right? gonna need it like especially it's a when big you get part to of the game dude when you hit x ball i was gonna say oh yeah oh man the second you hit x ball because like dude sometimes uh you're the other the other team on your uh fuck they just decide to get mercy and lose in like four exactly. games and then you're like well shit we have 10 minutes left in like four and a half minutes and you have 10 minutes left of game time yeah. x ball you're just like oh man, boys you have not you have not fucking played intense paintball but that you played like like five, eight minutes of X-Ball. I feel like that gives you an appreciation for how hard the NXL League was back in the day, though. Like when it was PSP two minutes? God no, 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 no not PSP two minutes. No, NXL back in the day, dude. When it was literally 20-minute halves, you're playing all these points and you have two minutes in between. That's where X-Ball, the formats, come like came from. Mm -hmm. that's, that's why our sport is called that, NXL, at this point. Um, dude, it was... You had 20-man rosters, and the 20th dude played. <laughs> like, it, 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 it was fucking crazy back in the day. You know, I really yeah, wish I had to experience that. Yeah. And then, you know, I was a I was a child. Yeah, I mean, we all were pretty much. I think Brandon may have been. Is Brandon he the was oldest? probably on Is the Iron oldest? Man shoulders. I am. Yeah, I'm the oldest. You boomer. All right, uh, now you're the boomer because I've been left. Fucking geezer. <laughs> See, that's how he felt too. He was like, "This is fucked." <laughs> he's. I mean, he's not that much older than me. I'm. I'm gonna be the geezer to some of these kids running around the park someday. So it's like you know. I'm, bl I'm blessed that's where I am, dude, because, dude, eventually you're going to look back at the box and no one on the box you're going to recognize. Yep. Dude, I told my team, man. Well, unless you're fucking years? Dynasty. <laughs> and yeah, you dynasty just play dynasty with the right? same team for 40 years and win. Exactly. But eventually, <laughs> Dynasty's time will come. No, that's true. Right? Eventually, it will come. Yeah. Right? And, uh, dude, if you're really trying if you're really trying to take paintball as serious as, as you possibly can, you know, trying to go professional, you got to think to yourself, these, these are my fucking golden years. I must take advantage of it because mm -hmm. if you're not taking advantage of it, you're wasting your potential, right? Dude. Well, uh, I, I mean, mean, maybe not even just potential, but you're wasting time, money, you know, just effort that could be going towards maybe something else in your life. If this isn't the thing that you want to, you know, put a hundred percent of yourself into. Right. And it's like, if you don't, if you don't have that mindset, do you weed yourself out from the team? Right. Especially when you're trying to be on like a very hyper competitive team. Right. Like we're like, Dude, Brando will hold me to a high ass standard, right? Mm -hmm. He's like, and I will hold Brando to that. One, because it. it was, so you know, back to what you said, like with the, the highly competitive team. That's one of the things that's weird with paintball is you'll have teams in the same division. One team is around. getting drunk the whole time, and the other is playing like it's their life's tournament, and that's like kind of weird. War. <laughs> like, you know, obviously as you get up the ranks, D two, semi pro, pro. That shit's not happening anymore. But, like, at the lower divisions, a lot of these guys are just taking a vacation and playing paintball. And so it is weird, That's this, like, mindset. Yeah. That's the beauty of the sport is because you can do that. And you can do it at a national level. But right? why would you, you it, want to? That's the thing I, I've never I understood. I like, I agree. Y'all know how much money we paid. Fucked up wasting money? Dude, do your thing. Yeah. Right? Yeah, that's a good point. Right. If you can you afford know? that, hell yeah, go for it, brother. But uh, are you going to survive on a, on a hyper-competitive team? No. And you honestly shouldn't be there because you're just taking reps from someone who does want to grow and learn. At that point, you're not going to get any reps, right? Someone like our coach now, dude, if he well, saw one of us doing shit. that, holy mm. fuck, he'd lose his goddamn mind. I would, I'd be fearing for my life. Yeah. Right? Oh, that was one of the biggest things that impressioned me um, with that first DMG semi-pro group is, you know, I remember we were out at dinner and like, I want to say like 
one of the guys around the team got like a beer or something to drink, but like no one on the team, you know, we're, we're drinking alcohol or anything. And I was, I was like, Oh damn, like, you know, why do you guys do that and shit? And then, you know, they broke it down. They're like, well shit. I mean, why do we want to be, you know, slightly hung over and dehydrated when we're about to go play a super competitive tournament? And I was like, that makes fucking sense. And, <laughs> and in my head, that kind of changed that thought process. Of like, like as simple, oh, yeah. as simple as that and common yeah. sense as that is, it's but like, damn. Okay. But it was also like the fact it was, you know, that was a thought like, I want to be my best tomorrow. I'm not going to do that shit tonight. And like that, you know, there are guys like that who are trying to be the absolute best they can. And then there's also guys who are getting drunk and playing, you know, 10 man mounds. And it's like, what the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, but the thing is, right. The finals of 10 man always comes down to one team that's fucked up. And, and one, one team is playing hella serious. <laughs> yep. Right. And that's the final. And, and usually at that point, it's like, Usually, point, usually right? the no fucked up team might Well, I was going to say, usually the yeah. fucked up team is a bunch of, like, ex-pros or, like, lifer pros who've just been doing this for so long. They they can be drunk and kind of still play really well. Right? And they're just like, snake two. <laughs> snake two. All right. Or then, you know? or they may pull a Skyler and lose Maple Leaf Chiefs, the 10-man division, because they get a major in the finals. But, you know. Mm. I don't really remember that. I remember hearing that. Remember story, hearing about that? Remember. Fuck. I, I don't I, remember. I remember hearing about it. I remember hearing it. I I didn't like, see the play. Himself. Yeah, I didn't see the play. So I don't know exactly what happened. All I know is that it's the finals. He gets sent to the snake. I think he gets clipped off the break. Doesn't go out, and Plucky draws a major, and that pulls like three other guys. And yeah, it kind of fucked up the point. But uh, ah, poor guy. It's all good. I miss you, Sky. I, miss I know you won't hear this because you don't you don't do anything in paintball anymore. But I love you, buddy. I love you too. And let me tell you, Sky, uh, Logan is very much starting to look like your shadow. It's, let me just say. Yeah, I see very what you're saying with that. So. Yep. Very much so. Logan is turning into a uh, – I love watching Sky play paintball. I agree. Like, dude, that Sky was my teammate, bro. Sky was – bro, he was the guy that would uh, – he ghosts me now, which is fucking pissing me off. But, uh, <laughs> Maybe that's why we're bringing this up. We're just trying to get into contact with our friend that we missed. Right. And um, dude, he was always telling me, like, dude, when he when when he got bumped up, and I stayed behind, dude, he he always told me he's like he's like, dude, you're not that far behind me. Keep going, keep fucking grinding. Like you will be there, right? And uh, you know his words really like sat deep in my mind, where it's like, uh, dude, there would be times where I'd be like running on the fucking treadmill and it's like i'm getting tired and i'm like dude i would like legitimately like like picture sky's mind like picture sky's face and i'm like dude fuck that right gotta keep going gotta gotta get that extra little 10 minutes hatch are are you okay do we need to get you checked out about what i I don't know man that was a little american psycho of you there like yeah when i get a pain i just i think about skylar and then i don't stop it's like okay okay, buddy it's not just it's not just sky dude it'll be like sometimes it'll like it'll be a flash of different people it'd be brando it'd be it'd be it'd be cedar right it's like dude i want to work harder because i want to be the best me i can be for these people i think my joke is going over your head i i know it's not a like sadistic like "Ah, i've got to be better fuck i know it's not that but it's funny to paint it that way right and now my goal is to uh be better than him that's my goal I'm not gonna lie. If he came out to the field, I feel like you might be, because dude doesn't play paintball in a year, right? It, but it is what. It, but you know, he could be one of those guys that you can just pick up a gun and just be naturally good, right? Yeah, we don't know. I mean, we I would love know. to find out. Him. I would absolutely love it, Skyler. Please show up at the field someday. But uh, all right, we should we should probably wrap up the show at this point. We're just we're just asking for our friends to come back. That's all this has become. Okay. <laughs> but uh, but yeah mm. um. I, you know, my same list of things I always mention at the end of the show. Uh, make sure you rate the show. Uh, if you're on Spotify, YouTube, Apple Podcasts, whatever app you're on, uh, drop a five star, a like, you know, whatever is available there that helps out the show. Um, you can also, on those same platforms, subscribe to the show. So that way you'll get, you know, whenever these are ready to go, it'll be on your phone waiting for you. So, uh, you know, let's say you just wake up one Tuesday and boom, show's right there, ready, uh, ready to go. The other thing I want to mention, Patreon. Um, So if you guys are a little confused as to why this wrap-up show is now two weeks after the NXL event, if you're on public forums, it's because all the shows are delayed about a week. So when we record them, they go out to our Patreon uh, followers first, and then they get all the access and they get to hear our conversations. And then uh, it is delayed and it will go out to the... uh, the regular public, you know, just about about a week later. Um, so if you want to, you know, catch up to date, see uh, what we're talking about on the week we're talking about it, head over to patreon.com slash mafia underscore productions. Um, 
We also have the merch website. That's uh, mafiadigitalmedia.com. Uh, you can go there, check out all the things. Hatch, in the the video of Hatch breaking down, he was wearing the From the Sidelines hoodie. So if you want to look as fly as Hatch did in that uh, video, go grab God yourself damn, one. Get yourself some merch, bro. <laughs> and then last, but definitely, definitely not least, they're never the least, Liquid IV. We appreciate them again for coming on to the show. Um, if you want to pick up some for yourself, again, the uh, promo code is mafia underscore moffit, 20% off and free shipping. And uh, yeah, head over to liquidiv.com. You can use that and get yourself, uh, you know, the drinks. I got to try out that new flavor. I'm excited to try out that new flavor. So strawberry, lo- strawberry lemonade. I can't wait. Um, but yeah, guys, that's a podcast. I think we did we it. Uh, you know, uh, fuck, you got anything, any, any final thoughts, boys? I do. I do. Oh, okay. He has I one. Do. The guard snail goes 0.03 miles per hour. So I'm glad we wrapped this up. So then I, so then I Googled. How long would it take a garden snail to go a mile? Five days, 12 hours. I'm telling you. Yeah, you just, you take the 10 milli. The snail's never going to get you. Can the snake die? The sna- the no, the, can no. Can the snail it, die? It's like a crazy mythological it's snail infinite, that's never going to die. Snail. It, it will die right. when its mission is accomplished and that's touching you. <laughs> you know, like right, that, gotcha. that's, that's its exactly. life's goal. Okay. You know what? I'll take the money. I'll take the money, right? <laughs> Every time. The money. Every time. <laughs> Well, and on that note, <laughs> for uh, for Stephen Hatch, who you know was going to be running away from sales, and our our wonderful Ironman bloodline, Brandon Brando Baird. Uh, my name is Ryan Mafia Moffat. I hope you guys enjoyed this recap of the event, and uh, yeah, check us out next week, and we'll have another podcast for you. But uh, I think this time, it's uh, it's time for Hatch to make that noise. So uh, why don't you hit go ahead and hit it with us, brother? Bye. <laughs> See you guys on the next one.